Silverware is on the line in the BBL Trophy Final. Getting into the paint, great finish from Neymar right. It's a clutch team that can bring it out when it matters. But you can't forget about this London Lions team because if you take their attention away from them, you can easily get devoured. Welcome back to the Emirates Arena in Glasgow, where it's trophy finals day. And next up, it's time for the stars of the BBL to face off. The London Lions are out to defend their title against the Cheshire Phoenix, one of this season's surprise packages, who are hoping to rekindle their glory days and land their first piece of silverware in four years. And we've got a very special guest for the men's final. He's the reigning BBL Coach of the Year. Delighted to say, Riders head coach Rob Padanostro joins us as, of course, Kieran Achara and Drew Laska alongside as well. BBL legends all around the arena. Good to see you, Rob. Yeah, great to be here. Looking forward to it. A BBL Cup in the bag, front runners in, in the league. You've got to be pretty happy with how the season's gone so far. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. I love working with the guys. The most professional group we've ever had. Uh, enjoyable to come to work every day. BBL Cup, as I say, the first silverware locked down this season. A packed house in Birmingham. How special was that for you, given the last 18 months that you've had? Oh, it was amazing. I think that the Birmingham final has always been one of my favorites to go there. The atmosphere was incredible. And obviously to lift the, the trophy at the end was so special. It really was. And a brilliant perfor performance all And of course, more silver where, where that came from. So let's take a look at... Uh, this afternoon's game in a little bit more detail. Drew, I'll come to you first because the Lions, I guess they're used to this stage, right? They are used to the big occasion. Cheshire, latterly, less so. Does, does that favour London this afternoon? I would say so, but then I wouldn't because London hasn't played in this environment. If we reflect back to last year, the finals, remember, we're in lockdown, so the finals were played at Morningside Arena. They were played in Worcester, where our arenas that we're used to and accustomed to playing in but this is a new environment for everyone, so I don't see any team having an advantage in that department tonight. You know, on paper, Kieran, this looked quite similar to the cup final, right? A, a clear favorite in many respects, but a dangerous opponent. London taking the Leicester role, Cheshire taking the Manchester role. But then Thursday night happened, and London in the league were absolutely blown away. So that adds a whole different dimension to the stuff. Yeah, London are, are very volatile right at this moment in time. You, you, you don't know what London's going to show up. And injuries, players leaving. You know, I, I've seen them playing a lot more zone defense at this moment in time. They're, they're, they're trying to find a new identity at this moment in time. And hopefully it is, it is today. Phoenix have lost their last three, though. But they have been in particularly strong form for much of 2022. In many respects, are they one of the surprise packages for you this season, too? Yeah, they they bounced back. If we reflect back to November 5th when these two teams faced off on Sky Sports, it was a 39-point shellacking that the London Lions gave Cheshire. But credit to that organization and Ben Thomas. They've been able to bounce back. They went on a great run. They dropped their past three, but I think tonight it's a clean slate and they won't be reflecting on anything but winning tonight. They're going to try and grab the opportunity. London, despite some of these erratic performances we talked about, we expect them to be involved in big games like this. They're the defending champs, of course, beating Plymouth in the final last year. The way this season has gone, do you think here this represents London's best chance of silverware? I would say yes. Uh, I think Leicester Riders, not because Rob's here with us today, but they, <laughs> no, they, they, they're high flying at this moment in time. I think this is London's best opportunity, at least to get that confidence and momentum going into the playoffs. 
here's the route to the BBL Trophy. London were in the top half of the draw, uh, which many people saw as the, the tougher half on paper when you look at the teams that were in that part uh, of the draw. They beat the Eagles in the first round, took down Manchester, the beaten cup finalists in the quarters, which meant they met Bristol in the semi-final. Two-leg semis in the trophy, of course, and a commanding first-leg advantage meant that the second leg was a formality, Drew, wasn't it? Yeah, the, 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 this leg was lost in the first the first game down in Bristol. You lose 20 points at home. It's nearly impossible to go on a road and make up that difference. And, you know, London was able to pick up a routine win at home and advance to this venue today. Let's take a look at the route to the final for Cheshire in the bottom half of the draw. Logically enough, if London were in the other half, uh, Cheshire beating uh, Kieran's former team, uh, the Scottish Fury, uh, in the first round. Plymouth then beaten in the quarters. We're seeing action here from the semi-final uh, defeat of the Glasgow Rocks. Another one of your former clubs, Kieran. So you're presumably not at all happy with Cheshire right now. No, definitely <laughs> not. You know, knocking down Falkirk Fury, my, my, my former club, and then Glasgow Rocks in a heartbreaking second leg. Uh, you know, it's, it's definitely not my favourite. But at the same time, you know, if a team's going to beat those teams, let's go on and, and take it all the way. 150 points racked up in that semi-final. Just shows how potent this Cheshire offense could be. Oh, yeah. You know, they can get up and down the floor with speed. They can make the three-point shot. Second chance points as well for them is important. They really get to the glass. You have to box them out. And, you know, when they looked at that draw, when it came out, I'm sure they thought to themselves, hey, we got a great opportunity here. And give them credit. You know, even though they lost that first leg to Glasgow by double digits or so, they were able to go home and blow them out. So they knew they had the opportunity to get here, and they got it. All right, let's take a look first at the London roster. Uh, the number of changes here, which I think is going to be one of the main narratives today, most notably the reported departure of Julian Washburn earlier this week. He's certainly not playing today. Kieran, how big a loss is he going to be? To me, he was uh, their defensive identity. He, he took on the role of always guarding the best player. It's something he's done in every single team he's been at. So to lose a player of his calibre, especially defensively, uh, it's a big, big loss for London Lions. Isaiah Reese, another American import, another key player in this London site, out injured. No Will Neighbour as well. So it's fair to say, Drew, that injuries have played a, a big part in that inconsistency for London this season. Well, this time of year is the dog days of the BPO, and to make it to a trophy final, you got to be healthy. Fortunately, London was able to make it here, but now they've been bit by the injury bug, and you got to find a way to figure it out and get by, and I'm sure they will be tonight. Because we always talk about London having one of the, the deepest rosters in the BBL, if not the deepest, but right now, they're arriving in this final quite short-stacked, aren't they? They are looking like a historical Cheshire Phoenix at this moment in time. You know, going with five deep, a couple, couple players off the bench, and they're going to have to ad adapt to that. Cheshire have got some big hitters in their ranks as well. A miserable start to the season for them, but as we've talked about, they've turned it around. Who are the players, Rob, that you think have been instrumental in that change? Well, Teddy Arakafor at the point, you know, signing him was really a big step for Cheshire. And, you know, he gives them that comfort in the backcourt. He's been so many places and played so many high levels that he's able to control the game for him. I also think that Naaman Wright's scoring from the wing is important. But the signing of Larry Austin gives him that energy. You know, we played him a couple of weeks ago. He has a smile on his face all game. He continues to play hard 94 feet. So I think when they brought him in, they really got a lift that they needed. Well, there are no shortage of big uh, names on both sides today. Earlier in the week, we spoke to a couple of those key players to get their perspective on the task ahead. Robinson hits the three. Has a raffle looking to reply. Oh, that is an unbelievably tough shot. Williams. Williams. For three. Oh my goodness. My thoughts and feelings going into the trophy final is, uh, you know, very exciting. The year before when we played for the trophy final, we didn't play in front of any fans because of COVID. So I think this year it's going to be a lot of fun. I've read on BBO it said it's a record-breaking crowd, so I think it's going to be very fun to play. I'm excited to be there. Uh, it's a great opportunity. Um, it's a testament to the work we've put in over the season. Um, we've really grown and developed as a team. It's an awesome feeling playing in front of that many fans and playing in front of Sky. We just want to go out there and perform and win and bring some silverware back home. It's our first chance to win some silverware. If we do win, it will make sure that we're back-to-back -back finals, back-to-back -back champions. Coming back and beating Glasgow by uh, 42, I think it was, in the second leg, it gives us a lot of confidence, uh, the confidence we need around this time of the year. It shows that when we play well, when we play together, uh, we can beat any team. 
I'm not going to give away any weaknesses because I don't want him to fix it. Um, but their strengths are definitely the ability to shoot the ball, um, rebound and, and play at a fast pace. They've got a lot of athletic guys, so um, that's something we need to look into and control. And uh, I think we can do that. Stolen away by Dirk Williams. Has Washburn with him. Goes to the finger of Washburn's I think one of their big strengths is their you know, offensive rebounding. You know, they're really good on the board. Um, they're scrappy, you know, they get out, they get steals, they run the lanes. Got a lot of dynamic players, you know. So we really got to be on our A game and focusing on certain guys and try and take away certain things. Individually for me, um, it's going to be guys like uh, the Larry Austin Jr., um, Neymar Wright. Um, for me, I know there's probably two guards, two guys I'm going to have to guard. And also Teddy Okafor, uh, he played really well the last game, so uh, we're going to have to maintain him. There's two shooting guards, Dirk Williams and Lorenzo Cugini, two of the best shooters in the league. So just being locked in to guard them, knowing their skills. Justin Robinson, which is going to be tough. Um, I'd probably switch on to Dirk Williams and maybe Cugini and try and keep them off the three-point line. Offensively, just taking care of my team and trying to put them in the best position to make the right plays and, and score more than them. It's not really like individual matchups, you know. It's a team game and you know we all have to kind of just do our job, you know. The individual stuff, matchups, I don't really pay attention to that too much. Some of the keys to win this game would definitely be keeping them off the three-point line, um, rebounding the ball and um, sharing the ball, playing hard for each other and leaving it all out there. Like I said, it's one game and whatever happens in 40 minutes is, is going to determine the winner. It's a bit high, Jerobi did well to hang on to that. Up the rat for three, knocks it down. I can't deal with too much, you know. Um, I can't really expose our, our hand like that, but um, making sure that we're locked in, you know. Making sure that from the first minute to the 40th minute that we're locked in, everyone's on the same page, and you know we're taking each possession at a time. I think we have enough talent. I think everything else will kind of take care of itself. It's one game. Uh, you can't get it back. So, you know, the best thing to do is just go all out, play hard. Uh, you know, I think obviously it's for a championship. So uh, a lot of guys are going to be motivated to want to play hard. Winning a sub silverware will really mean a lot for me. And as far as the club, it'll mean a lot for me uh, helping Chester bring some silverware to their uh, program. It will be a, a massive feat, you know. I, I mean, you know, we had a bunch of injuries. We've got guys out now, Josh, Isaiah. It will be a big, a big, big, big feat. When we win the trophy Sunday, uh, we plan on going out as a team, celebrating on the bus, uh, playing music, you know, enjoying the vibes, enjoying the moment. Just hang out with my teammates, uh, you know, probably play a couple card games and stuff like that afterwards, celebrate, because I'm sure we're probably going home right after the game. So, yeah, uh, my wife's coming up, so we'll be able to celebrate together. Drew is somebody who knows a fair bit about uh, a successful backcourt tag team. Talk us through these two that we're going to see this afternoon. See what I did to that ball, right? Oh, nice move. <laughs> Didn't even blink. But yeah, these are two guys that are averaging 30 points and six assists together. And they have the chemistry and camaraderie of last year. Although this year, they're still trying to figure out what that relationship is because Justin Robinson has battled himself back from a major injury. But we know two things. Justin Robinson is coming off ball screens, looking to get his own. But if he knows he doesn't have his own offense, he has a guy, the leading scorer of the league at 20 points a game that he can rely on. That also shoots it well from the three in the corner. But if we flip to Cheshire, um, ironically, those guys average 30 points as well, but giving you eight assists. And like Rob mentioned early, Teddy O is more control with it. He's more of a facilitator coming off ball screens, looking to get guys open. And someone, a two former two guard myself, like Neymar Wright, I'm licking my chops because I know that guy's going to get me the ball and I'm going to get in scoring positions. Brilliant stuff. Really looking forward to seeing both of them tag teams that is in action this afternoon and there is plenty more build up coming your way as we get closer to tip off here in Glasgow we'll see you in a few
Lions Phoenix is our 2022 trophy final and it is wide open with Cheshire, one of the most improving teams in the BBL since the turn of the year. And London, despite their all-star cast, well, they can be exhilarating one minute and exasperating the next. Some big names in action today and some really fascinating head-to-head -head matchups. So that's where we'll key in next. And we'll start with the floor general battle. Justin Robertson of the Lions versus Teddy O of the Phoenix. And as Drew was mentioning earlier, Rob, injuries have affected Justin over the last 12 months. Do you think he's being, uh, he's close to being back to his best? Well, I mean, a little quickness down, maybe not the same, but he's still such a savvy, smart player. You know, watching the game back last week when they played Cheshire, I thought he played really well. I thought he found his guys well. And it, for, to me, it's going to be interesting to see how Cheshire plays him on the pick and roll. Because if you play London wrong on the pick and roll, Justin will find the guys and they'll bury you from the three-point line. Stylistically, how do these two compare? A little different. You know, Justin may be more of a guy that looks for his shot. Teddy more of a guy that sets the play up you know, runs the team, but don't sleep on Teddy's offense. You know, we've seen it time and time again that if he wants to, he can get to the basket and score, and he also can hit the three. So two complete guards should be a great matchup today. Dark Williams versus Neymon Wright is the next head-to-head -head we're looking at. Dark leading the league in points per game. Neymon in the top 10 in the BBL. Kieran, what makes them such prolific scorers? I think it's the willingness to score. I, I would say Dark is a lot more efficient. You know, he's, he's really getting these spots. But Neymon, he is a dog. You know, he, he just puts it, you know, he can get his shot off, get to the basket, he's strong. You know, and I think for, for that, you know, the way they, they, they compare from a scoring front, you know, that, that willingness to score is what sets them apart. Speaking of prolific scorers, Lorenzo Cagini, very dangerous from the three-point range. Larry Austin of the Phoenix, a player Rob mentioned earlier on, another major offensive contributor. He's averaging almost 15 a game through. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this matchup. These are two game changer players that typically traditionally come off the bench. We'll see what happens today, but they're on the opposite end of spectrums as far as what they bring to the team. Lorenzo, he's more of a pure shooter. He's getting his feet set. He's looking to, you know, let it go from 35 feet plus. Whereas Larry Austin Jr., he's relentless trying to get down the hill. All right, let's get the perspective of both of this afternoon's head coaches. A little bit earlier on, they caught up with Drew. Coach, 59 days on the job, and you're coaching in your first final. How does it feel? Feels good. Um, no, finals is why we play this game, right? So, yeah, we're excited. Coach, you won the trophy competition four straight years, 2001 to 2004. Is this a chance for the team to rekindle those glory years? Hopefully, you know, I think if we, I think already if we win today, we'll be the most successful team in this competition. Um, but we deserve to be here this year. We've, you know, we had some luck with the draw. There's no doubt about it. But we've had some tough games along the way. Obviously, Plymouth away, and then Glasgow. We had to beat them in the second round, uh, second leg after being down in the first. So we deserve to be here. Um, look, we're the underdogs. I know that we're going to play like that. And, you know, we're going to play free and, uh, and enjoy it. Many questions regarding the team roster into the lead up. How has this team been able to prepare despite the distractions? It's, it's been difficult at times. We've obviously got some key injuries. Um, so, you know, preparation has been fairly difficult. Um, but I feel like the last two, three days, we've had a really good two or three days where we've actually been able to you know, fully prepare, sit down, do video, get on court a little bit. So I feel like we've prepared really well for, for this final. Finals experience in the roster, how much will that factor? Uh, Mike Ocherobia played in this trophy final last year for Plymouth against um, London Lions, so he knows about it. He, you know, he knows what it's like to be on the losing side. Obviously, I've been in a final. Um, I'm just trying to help the guys understand that, you know, it is just another game, but they've got to enjoy it. That, you know, these, these don't come along very often. Some players might never get a chance to play in another final again. So enjoy it, you know, play team basketball and let's go out there and win. And what are the key factors to lift the trophy and become back-to-back -back trophy champions? I, you know, for, for me, it's going to be like which team kind of settles quickest and, you know, plays their game. Uh, for, for us, I think defensively, we're going to have to be really good today. There's going to be lots of pick and rolls. Teddy's going to be in a lot of pick and rolls today. We have to be, you know, really honed in on him. He's one of the main parts of their team, really big, you know, creator for them. So we're going to have to be, you know, top of our game defensively, I feel. And what will it take for your team to upset and lift your fifth trophy? Hard work, 
a lot of effort. We've got to make sure that we play hard for 40 minutes. That's got to be the bare minimum that we do. Uh, we've got to play team basketball. We've got to play for each other, both ends of the floor. Share the ball offensively and keep them under pressure defensively. If we do that for 40 minutes, we win the game. Thanks for your time, coach. Good luck tonight. Thanks, Drew. Well, we just heard both coaches' keys to the game. Kieran Achara, final word to you. What do you think is the fundamental key to this game? For me, you know, we talk about scoring, but where's the scoring coming from? I, I think those players coming off the bench, you know, the teams are not as deep. You know, is a Kyle Carey going to step up tonight, you know, get the double-figure scoring? You know, are the young barking boys going to step up and make big plays? For, so for me, it's where's that scoring coming from, from your, from your core group, but the, the, the supporting cast as well. We touched a little bit on the environment, Drew, and it's something we talked about before the, the BBL Cup final as well. Just talk us through that and how that could be significant to some of the players out there today. Well, none of these teams ever practice here. You look behind the basket, there's about 50 feet, so the depth perception plays a play. So it's tough. New basketball, new rims. It's always a factor in finals, so you can see the shooting might be down a little bit. All right, that looks like we are ready to get this one underway. It is the second BBL silverware of the season to be decided, and it will be over the next two hours and change. So let's hand back to our commentary team this afternoon. Ant Rowe and Dan Rowe. Thank you very much, Nat. Yes, a fascinating game, really, because you would, if you if you didn't look at the games over the last few weeks and the lineups, so you'd say, oh, London, heavy favourites, and Cheshire, massive underdogs on that. And then you look at the way London played on Thursday night, for example, you look how thin their roster looks compared to where they were at the beginning of the season, and you might go, well, actually, Cheshire could be favourites for this game, couldn't they? You're right, Dan, and the result as well, that plays a part on the mentality of the team as well. When you pick up a couple losses, and remember, they were chasing uh, Leicester Riders uh, to, to, to win the league title. You know, we, we had high, huge expectations on coming in, and the expectations are still quite away from them coming into this game. You know, people expect them to win a trophy this year. However, you look at the Cheshire Phoenix side, they are one of the hottest teams in the BBL at the moment. Growing in confidence and really, really exciting to watch. And you look behind that Cheshire Phoenix uh, bench, there are hundreds and hundreds of people who come up the uh, M6. It's going to be like Ellesmere Port Sports Village in here. It's going to be loud behind them. <laughs> it is indeed. It's uh, it's all the home game away from home. But, I mean, that's just credit to the Phoenix. You know, it's that, got that community feel here. And I've been in this situation before where you've got those travelling fans. Please believe me when I tell you, it makes a difference. I remember looking up and seeing a sea of red or seeing a sea of green. You know, and it, it gives you that extra power, you know, that extra incentive to, to want to perform on that centre stage. Well, they will certainly feel pumped and buoyed by that. Even just walking in, in when they walked in, the coach walked then Thomas walked in, there was a big roar in it. I mean, it's really, really loud. They are just behind us as well. And they have come in their numbers, they brought their drums, and they, they're all in their T-shirts, so you can't miss them. It will be a fantastic atmosphere. Well, Coach Thomas said something really quite unique in that interview. He said, you don't... You don't, you, you don't get these days very often. You know, you can go, a player can go in his career and not have any of these days or may not have a, another one again. It's the same for a fan, but this fan has to stay there year after year, disappointment after disappointment, or elation after elation. And this is a group of fans here that they haven't seen as much final action uh, for, 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 for a few years now, so this day is very special to them. Well, it's 12 years since they've been in a trophy final. And it's been uh, best part of thick end, thick end of 20 years since they uh, had that great spell in the early 2000s where they won four of these in a row. And again, you look at this London lineup, and, it, and it's, it's amazing, really, how little they have compared to you know the wealth that they started the season uh, with. And they've got a couple of young guys in there. Obviously, a new coach. Uh, in his first final as well. A lot of moving parts on this Lions team. The newness is, is everywhere, okay, and including the coaching staff. You know, you look at this, this this team as well, and you watch them play in European competition, playing with some of the you know, high-caliber competitions they did. You think, wow, by the time we get to March, these guys are going to be rolling. But it hasn't worked out like that. And I look at the roster of the returners here, Justin Robinson, Jordan Williams. These are guys that have come back from injury. You know, how how you know, how, are they, how are they locked in mentally and physically? You know, it, it's very difficult when you're coming back from that. And Ryan Martin, the guy that they've, they've put into this squad, he actually was, was a several season uh, injury that he had. So there's a lot of newness in this team, including top down with the coaching staff. Well, you have a look at the uh, numbers, and you know, not massively dissimilar between uh, these two teams. London obviously have uh, some tremendous three point shooters on their team, and that will be 
the key for them to get those uh, three-point shots up and get those three-point shots in. If we have a look at the team leaders now as well, Dirk Williams, such a, an offensive uh, weapon. Jordan Williams, how healthy is he? Justin Robinson, how healthy is he? Given all the problems they have, and name on right, very smooth offensively, capable of having a big night. There are so many questions, but they all will be answered very shortly. We are not far away from the opening tip here at the Emirates Arena. We'll get it all underway after this break. Welcome back to Glasgow this week. British basketball lost an iconic figure in Betty Cadona, and we are going to pay some respects to her now. The British basketball community is coming together to pay tribute to the legendary pioneer, Betty Cadona O'Hee, who sadly recently passed away. An unrivaled process of the women's game in the UK, Betty dedicated 60 years of her life to passionately inspiring thousands of people to play the sport that she loved so much. She competed in the first ever National Cup Championships in 1965 and subsequently delivered 14 separate pieces of silverware as head coach of Sheffield between 1989 and 2009, prior to moving on to work as the chair of the club. The legacy that Betty leaves goes way beyond the hackers. It spans not only the local community, but also leaves an indelible print on British basketball itself. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please stand and join us, if you are able, in 24 seconds of applause in recognition of the staggering accomplishments of British basketball, forces to remember and respect a true great Betty Cadona of the year.
Well, as we return to the basketball, a lovely tribute to a special woman in British basketball. Let's have a look at the starting five. And Lorenzo Cugini and into the starting five for the uh, Lions. He's come off the bench an awful lot this season. He's an explosive scorer and shooter as well. Well, sometimes we get those slow starts offensively in the final game. Maybe Coach Veer wants to introduce Cugini in the, the lineup straight away. And hopefully he can stay true to those 14 points a game that he offers. And if we have a look at the Cheshire Phoenix, another guy who uh, has spent a lot of his time coming off uh, the bench with some great impact. Larry Austin Jr. in the starting line. I love Larry Austin coming off the, the bench, not just because he's a scorer, but that energy he brings both sides of the floor. However, he's thrust into this game straight away. Let's see how that originates with um, the Teddy Okorafor as well from tip-off. Well, we're delighted to be joined by uh, coach Rob Paternostro in uh, commentary. Rob, these are the moments that you've been through so many times. What are you saying to you guys just before they go out? Yeah, the just going back over to Scott and report a little bit, drawing up the play and just telling them to enjoy it. Get out there and, and, and enjoy the day and, and bring it. And it's a long game, long 40 minutes. Uh, stay with the game plan, uh, but go out there and enjoy yourself. And what do you make of those starting lineups for the two teams? Well, when you look at Cheshire, I mean, they really don't have too much of a choice. They have to put Austin in the lineup. They lost Mockford, remember. You know, big, big loss from the shooting. And same thing with London. You know, the bench, you look at it, Cugini has to play in that start lineup. So I'll see a lot of these guys that are starting today. I can see them playing a heavy, heavy minutes. Well, that's the thing. You usually shorten the rotation in the final. London, really, I mean, of the guys who've been playing minutes in recent weeks, only really Jordan Williams to bring off the bench. Yeah, and you look at it, and koboza has been getting some minutes, a young player. Uh, Tawai hasn't been really playing much, so it'll be interesting to see how often Coach Veer goes to the bench. Here we go, then. It's the London Lions and the Cheshire Phoenix for the 2022 BBL Trophy. The ball is up and we are underway and it is the Lions, the defending champions, who will start us off. Here's Kelly. Out to Williams. Stepped on the line. That will be a Cheshire ball. A good intention from the Cheshire Phoenix defense straight away. Good energy again, Larry Austin Jr. Typically they're looking to, to inject this into a game off the bench, but he starts the game with a high energy and results in an early London turnover. Just got the side of his foot on that sideline. London showing a bit of full court pressure here. In the zone press. Here's right. Around the screen, back into a zone. The Lions, uh, Austin. That's what he does so effectively. He's very direct. Robinson, round to Cagini. Dirk Williams, a little reaching foul. It's, uh, I know it's name on right. who's called for it. Yeah, I see the zone defense from London, you know, played them last week. Uh, they played a lot of zone. You know, I hadn't seen that much more of a matchup zone, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how long they stay in it and how Cheshire attacks it. And you don't have to worry about Ben Mockford, you know, again with that zone. So it's an adapt adaptation here that could slow this offense down. Williams turns the corner, long two. He's short. Kelly trying to grab the offensive rebound. It went off by Coach Arobio and out of bounds. Kyler Kelly's going to need another active game today, and we've seen what he can do when he's active. It's a case of, is he mentally locked in, and is this the type of game against a Mike Hart Ruby that's fit for him? Well, about four and a half seconds on the inbound there. Justin Robinson just got it in play in time. Here's Robinson in the corner long two all straight. Well, and then we see Justin Robinson here. Let's, let's, let's stop. Deny that he's a former MVP himself, would love the big stage. He's again transitioning back from injury, and that's a good sign if you're the London Lions camp. An early shot made for him. Austin. Thank you, Rafa. Pull it pass into Ocharobi, who can't convert. And Kelly with the rebound. It's a good look from the point guard there, and Mike Ocharobi will want that one back. That's a basket that he has to make. Robinson. Drops it off to Martin, back to Kelly. 
top of the key and off the mark. Austin directing traffic. Right. He drives hard to the hole and finishes. Nice job by Wright. He saw the matchup that he had. He had Kelly out there. And Neiman has that quick first step to get to the basket. Good recognition from him. Is Martin for three knocks it down. And that'll do the world of good for his confidence. Martin's a guy that's really struggling to shoot the ball efficiently. That's a good early sign from him. Shooting under 24% on the season from three point line for the six games he's played since joining the Lions. Shot clock being counted down by the Knicks fans. Austin going a long way around. Kelly changed that shot. Here's Robinson pushing to Williams and the finger roll. That's the thing that they've got to be very mindful of. Those, those shots there that are missed. London Lions will be able to transition straight down the other end. In a matter of seconds, Dirk Williams is laying the ball up. An interesting matchup here with Kelly on Bradley. Bradley should stay outside and keep away from the basket. Because you can see what Kelly does when he's around. And you can see what Bradley does when he's out on the three-point line. And he's shooting the ball really well at the moment. Levi Bradley was huge in the semi-final matchup. Hit some big shots early. His confidence is high. Dirk Williams to the basket. Draws a foul. It doesn't drop for him, though. He'll shoot too. And that's what you like about Dirk. You know he can shoot the ball from the perimeter. Such a pure shooter. If he's open, it's good. But when guys come at him, now he can take it to the basket. Even going left here. And clear call foul on Ocherobia. And that's a, an issue. Mike Ocherobia for me is one of the, been the most effective centers there are this year. <laughs> but behind Otari and Nelson Henry, in my opinion, I think he's a player that's grown and developed year on year in the BBL. And he, the type of player like him as well, you, we want to keep in our league. I, I think he's a, a legitimate contender now of being one of the best in his position. Well, the. Uh other thing to keep an eye on, Dickerson at the end of the uh, game last week picked up a knee injury. If Metrovia does get into foul trouble, that would be a natural place to go to see how healthy he is. Here's Wright. Bradley under pressure. Rebound Kelly. Cugini in the corner, wide open. That's dangerous. Dodge one there. Oh! Rookie ref! Oh, not right. A beautiful move in the open court to get to the rim. Yeah, a little shake. A little crossover. Coming up full speed. Boom! Got him. Gets to the basket. Draws the foul. And one thing about Cheshire, though, they're going to have to do a better job in transition of finding the shooters. London is so good at pushing the ball up the floor, and they have so many shooters that if you don't match up right, open threes like that will be there all day. Both these two teams in the open floor are going to be really effective in terms of being able to push the ball. And again, it was a quick miss there from the Cheshire Phoenix, which led to that uh, sort of a, a disorientation there on defense, which, which Kajini had that, that corner ball, that open shot in the, in the, on the three. Second foul shot is good. One point game, four minutes in. Martin puts it on the floor this time, gets some room in the paint, leaves it short. Right, driving hard. I think he's trying to, well, he's getting two shots for that. I wondered at first whether he was trying to dish it off, but he will go to the line. Ooh, boy, be interesting to see that one again. Right with good first step, looks quick out there today. Remember, he didn't play last Sunday against them. It's a good sign, though, Rob, you're right. I mean, there was definitely no, no issue with the elevation there of name one right, which, you know, you always question, Mike, a player of his athleticism, you know, how much does it take away from his game when he's coming back from an injury? But he looked pretty uh, <laughs> pretty good to be there on that take to the basket. Makes the second. We're tied at seven. a hand check foul there. No, no, it's foul on Bradley, my mistake. 
His second foul. So he will have to sit down. There's the foul. Only foul trouble there for Levi Bradley. And when you look at the Phoenix now, remember they lost Mockford, who's one of the most dangerous three-point shooters in the league. Now you bring Carey in for right, and you bring Dickerson for Bradley. So, you know, you're limited a little bit with the shooting on there. It'll be interesting to see how London plays that line. Robinson tosses it up high. Martin comes down with it, no way through, and that will be a Cheshire ball. Good challenge from Dickerson there, wasn't there? Easy put back finish there for Ryan Martin, who's been pretty active so far in this game. He's looked through shot, uh, shot early. He's hit a three, Mr. A pull up mid range. But he's looked uh, active early. Well, there was a warning on the London bench there for something they said. Still in the matchup. Dickerson. Five on the shot clock, open grapple, short on the three. Jordan Williams gets his first touch of the ball. And that's stolen away by Trilogia. Austin waiting for Carey, but the pass is a bit low. Austin able to come up with it himself. But Jerovia trying to clean things up and doing exactly that. That's huge for the Cheshire Phoenix, the offensive rebounding. That's the first offensive rebound so far this this game and it results in a basket for them but good push to the basket was a bad pass originally but Larry Austin Jr. stays with it and Archerobio cleans it up here's Jordan Williams in the low block out to Martin for three misses everything and that will be a Cheshire ball an interesting match up there they brought Carey in so now Arakafor goes to Kajini and Carey, who's known as a great defender, goes right to Justin Robinson to try to harass him. You know, you know that London doesn't have a lot of depth at that point guard position. Maybe Carey can wear him out early is what they're thinking. Well, they have four of them at one stage. Justin Robinson will get most of the minutes, I would imagine, at the point guard position. Here's Oki Rappel at the top. Front iron, another offensive rebound. Good pass as well from Ocherovia. Austin got trapped underneath, able to escape. Inside to Dickerson, under pressure from Williams. Ocherovia again, working hard on the offensive ground. That's what you have to take full advantage of. If Dickerson and Ocherovia is playing together, they have to control or dominate the offensive glass. Dirk Williams. Dream. He's a guy you cannot give any space to. It's as consistent as they come. High efficient, easy three point shots for Dirk Williams. Dickerson driving all the way to the basket for the layup. Now we see Dickerson. He can score. You know, had a big college career at Washington, was a scorer in the Pac 12. So if he gets it in the right position, he can certainly put the ball in the hoop. Concerned with the lack of resistance internally there from the lines. Kyla Kelly, the will uh, be one of the best shot blockers you'll see of rim protectors in the league, but he wasn't really anywhere near that play. Eugenie steps into the mid-range. Not in, but it's a goal ten. Jordan Williams tipped it. Somebody uh, interfered with the net, which is why that was called a goal ten. Uh, Larry Austin, whose hand touched the net. Man to man. Okay, Raffle trying to get past Dirk Williams. Now has Jordan uh, Williams for a company. Shot clock down to five. Ocherovia using his strength to the hook. Wow, that handed hook from Ocherovia. Most of the time, it's the right, but today he shows, I can use the left too. Nice move. Kajini sneaking in down the line for two. 
I thought Eugenie does a really good job of his work, moving like the basketball, cutting, and, and finding himself ways where he can get points, not just on open threes, but again, going up the rim. Carey. Back it comes to Oki Rappel, working the high pick and roll to the spin. Drops it off. Austin through traffic scores. That's why he's so tough. He's fearless, isn't he? It's a seven footer there trying to block his shot. Larry Austin does not get the memo. He doesn't care. Strong finish. Well, are into the game now. A young man who wasn't even really on the roster a couple of weeks ago, playing big minutes in the final. Here's Oki Rappel running hard, getting all the way to the rim and laying it in. Turnovers, 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 and Cheshire Phoenix are one of these clubs that will run it down your easy transition there for them. You know, if I'm the Phoenix now with Robinson off the court, you got to pick up the pressure a little bit. They needed that. Dirk Williams gets them a score. I did wonder whether the Lions might call a timeout down five, but only a minute to go in the first quarter. Like a getting to the rim. Williams has the mismatch, can't take advantage of it, and Dickinson with the rebound, and there's a tangle there, wow. Cheshire fans coming nuts, running a foul. He did a really good job to recoup that ball, there's a lot of contact there, no call. Austin wow. dancing his way to the run, there he goes, what a play by Larry Austin Jr. Wow, that's the thing, you've got Larry Austin Jr. And you've got Teddy Okarafo with that pick and roll. They've both been very effective so far, finding those pockets as they come off the screen. And Larry Austin, one thing on his mind there, and that was to get all the way to the rim. Great finish. And what you love about Austin is he plays with a smile on his face, he plays with energy. But he's one of these guys that's a great layup guy. He makes layups, tough layups. And, you know, this day and age, it's hard to find those guys that can get in amongst the trees, especially small guys, and can finish. And he does such a great job of that. He's made some good dunks recently, too. No doubt. <laughs> Highlight film. Waiting to happen, Larry Austin. Uh, he's uh, laid his case for a play of the season in that semi-final victory over Glasgow. Last few ticks here of the first quarter. Williams. Oh, thrown out by Carey. Austin's looking at the clock. He has Oka Rappel ahead. Oh, he's missed it. Oh, and it's blocked by Joe Williams. Well, two on none, and they get nothing out of it. Wow. Wow. And these are little plays like that, where you remember these plays. And we get to the fourth quarter, and it's a one-point game. You remember this play. And we're sitting here in the fourth quarter at 20 points. We forget about it. But those plays can come back to bite you. Well, an excellent first quarter for the Cheshire Phoenix. They lead the London Lions by six here in the trophy final. Second quarter action coming up after the break.
Welcome back to Glasgow, where the Cheshire Phoenix will get us underway with the second quarter, leading by six. Dickerson, nice pass, just a little bobble from Ocherovia. And there's a whistle on the baseline, foul called. Well, as you can see, it's not the cleanest of plays there, but that's what you want. You want your four and your five working internally together. And Mike Oxerobia there gets a trip to the line. Again, in that matchup zone in the area that's open, it seems like, is the middle. You know, watching back the last game, you could see that that's where Cheshire was attacking. And with a full week to prepare, you think they should have been ready for it. And they're attacking that middle now and getting good looks on it. Well, Cheshire struggling a little bit from the free throw line. They're normally a 70% free throw shooter we talked at the top about the sight lines in, the, in this building it is a long way back to the to the walls and they don't really practice free throws in warm-ups they practice the, the normal jump shots and they run layups in that but they don't tend to practice too many free throws Robinson pulls up off the mark well, you should practice free throws yeah. before the game. What do you mean? Come on now. You can get there and get to that free throw line for a little bit. No. Oh. <laughs> I was just Back in your day. Mate. Back yeah, in your day. Back in your day. Back in your day. inside. It's really hard in all honesty to, to spend a lot of time on free throws just because you've got one guy shooting and everyone else is literally just standing around. So you're, you're right. There's only a proportion of the, lot of the, of the warm up you can allocate to free throws. But. Uh, yeah, but you should, you know, you're a pro basketball player. You've, you've shot enough free, free throws over the years. My one BBL appearance, I did not waste time practicing free throws because I knew I wasn't going to shoot at it. <laughs> oh, Bowser in the, uh, in the lane. Did he step too far? Yes, he did. Traveling violation. Ooh. Looking for the foul call there, Kaboza. You know, I've been impressed with him in the time that he's been on the floor. You know, not easy to just join this team. Young kid. Uh, but he's done pretty well when he's been out there. He seems composed and uh, definitely can make plays from the backcourt. The grapple off of the screen by Dickinson. Kirova, top of the key, off the mark. Not too much creativity there on the offense. Not, not really much ball movement, no cutting, a little bit stagnant. Williams trying to use his strength to back down, kicks it out, round it goes to Robinson. And Jerovia with the rebound. A well contested shot there from Carey, really got out from there, made him uncomfortable. Pass, just gave Dirk Williams a bit of an opportunity there. He's only able to knock it out of bounds. Bradley and Austin return to the game. Block and foul the call. Pugini going to return to the game for London. Let's see where is it going? Sideways on that one. His strength that foul is on the floor, the basket won't count. Bradley got to understand, excuse, excuse me, Martin's got to understand that Bradley, left handed player, you do not want him to go to the middle, and you don't even want him to go left, and he did both on that occasion. You know, take away that middle, take away that strong hand. And you know, you can't let him just post up out of the side, out of bounds either. You gotta be ready for that. Well, here he is again, looking to go at him. Goes through the dribble the long way round. Robinson comes down with it. Lucky he didn't finish the play there again. Bradley getting to the middle, getting to a strong hand. Got to take that away. Pugini. Carey taps his chest, apologizes to his coach for a foul that he didn't need to commit. His first. Just a little too much... Uh, Energy from uh, Carey on that occasion. Here he is chasing Robinson around. 
down low to Williams. Oh, that's a, normally a very reliable shot for Jordan Williams. Well, Jordan Williams will move a lot of players in this league. Mike Hotsarovia is one of those few guys that he's going to struggle to move around. Right in the corner. Top shot, Neymar. Right. And Neymar can really shoot it. You know, he's the type of guy that you have to get way up on because any space, he'll let it fly. Indeed, he's very efficient. I liked him at Leicester. I thought he was really, really efficient. He'll get you that 16, 17 points a game. And he does exactly the same for Cheshire. He's got a bit more of a responsible role here on the offensive end, and I think he's a player that's grown into this. Well, the lead has grown to double figures. 26 points to 16. The Lions yet to score here in this second quarter. Offense a bit of a struggle for them. Well, two for five so far from three-point range, and I think that's the key to the game for Cheshire. You know, 12 three-point shots a game they make. They take 30 a game, so Cheshire are doing a good job of limiting their opportunities, and I think one way that you can do that is take care of the ball and get back on defense. Like I said before, it's not just in the half court, it's in that full court push where they get a lot of those three-point shots. No turnovers for Cheshire in the first 13 minutes of the game. And that's key against London because they do such a great job of taking it up the floor and getting good looks off your turnovers. And the point you make is a really good one, Rob, about only five three-point attempts. This is, I mean, we saw them on Sky a couple of weeks ago in Glasgow setting records with the amount of threes that they made. You have to have that attention to detail to take those three-point shots away. And for me, Reese out of the game changes that a little bit, right? Because Reese is a guy that can really get in the lane, really cause problems, which makes you help, and then you kick it out to all the shooters. So missing Reese will have an effect on the type of looks that they'll get today. A bit of full court pressure on Robinson here. Needs some help, and Kajini provides the outlet for Martin to find. So again, just flush Kajini off the three point line, and they force a turnover. Great work from Cheshire. That's turnover number six for the Lions as well. Bradley, that's only a good shot if it goes in there. Williams to the full point, oh, that is nice. You wonder where this offense will be without Dirk Williams. Nine early points for him. He's the only one that seems to be unfazed, and he can create his own shot as well. Difficult turnaround there. And again, you talk about turnovers. That was almost like a turnover, that miss. You know, they were able to get out in the open floor. So you got to take good shots, too. Jerobia, late in the shot clock. Right. Trying to feed it down. It's a bit low there for the big man to get. Robinson, Cuccini, loads of time and space. And that's going to be a foul on Bradley. That's a couple of times they've got away with it. And that is going to be the third personal foul on Levi Bradley. Timeout, I think, has been called as well. well they, they've uh, only had five fouls in the game, three of them on one player. Yeah, interesting he's on the floor here with the lead. You know, he's such an important player that you want him to get that third before halftime. Now, he'll most certainly sit the rest of the half, and I think it's an opportunity now for London's defense, you know, to close down the paint a little bit. You know, take Brad Bradley off the floor and his ability to shoot changes Chester a bit. Well, Still an eight-point lead, but they'll do it. They'd love to get to the quarter break. Still with a lead by that much. Lorenzo, as that happens, Justin now has it. Lorenzo, please, Ryan. Let's get Lorenzo. That's what we're looking for. All right, here we go. Lorenzo, two, one, two, three. A good look at the play drawn up there. As the Knicks fans seeing themselves on the big screen, enjoying themselves. Chris Tarbier into the game for the first time. His first job is going to be to set a screen here. They're going to try and free up Skijini, I think. Does exactly that. And it's short. Hope they're wanting a foul on the shot, but referee happy. The difficult shot to the screen really didn't give him a, an opening there or any space to, to shoot the ball. 
And Pagini with the steal. There is a uh, turnover to a quick succession. Robinson wheeling back to the free throw line. Nice shot. Difficult shot there again. It was contested, but Justin Robinson creating for himself. And this is a team as well that averaged 89 points a game. It was 90 above 90 points before, and here they are, you know, around the 20 mark here as we uh, we, we, we have 15 minutes to play. Austin driving hard, blocking foul is the call on Ryan Martin. He'll go to the line for a bonus. Nice play from Austin. He saw Tawia late on the screen. You know, Tawi a little struggling there to move his feet. He went right by him. And then again, we talk about the layup maker here. Another tough layup finish from Larry Austin. Just fearless. Every time he attacks the room, he's just fearless. And Ryan Martin kind of was, was there, and then he went underneath him, uh, which was made it a lot easier to call the block on that, on that call. Well, Martin... Uh, comes out of the game and uh, Kavos has checked in so that, that makes them a lot smaller in that one substitution really only Tawia has a recognized uh, physical presence same thing with Cheshire at the moment as well with Dickerson being the only one maybe four guard lineup for them too and stolen away by Wright well, he got in a bit of a muddle there, and he uh, threw it away, name on right. Yeah, he had two options, didn't he, and he, uh, he kind of split the <laughs> split the pass there and threw it out of bounds. And so as he picked up the dribble, he was sort of feet in the wrong place, hands in the wrong place. Kajina around the screen, and this is the three. Tawia with the offensive rebound. Robinson, top of the key. We've seen that shot many times over the years. We have indeed. Good screen there from Chris Powell and Justin Robinson the top of that. Well, Larry Austin with a rare miss player. The Bows are driving hard and running down his man, but it's a defensive foul on name on right. Loss of focus here and concentration from the Phoenix. Yeah, turnover play before, then a missed layup. Whoa. Tough one there. Uh, right had his feet set. It's two shot foul as well. Just wonder whether his feet were a little too wide in the stands. And it's also his second personal foul. So a little bit, they've, as I say, they've only had six fouls in the first half. But guy on two, guy on three. London have some issues as well. Martin has two, and Kelly has two. Well, if you're London, you got to feel okay here. You know, you're hanging around a bit. And Cheshire, you know, probably had a chance to have a bigger lead right now. But London is hanging in there. And look at Dwight. He does a good job in the glass again. And that is a held ball. Possession arrow favoring the Lions. Four and a half minutes to go in the first half. 23-29 in favor of Cheshire. I'm not sure what the discussion is going on out there. Oh, we are. Fakes the hand off and goes to the rim. Can't make that no. Everything but the finish. He did a really good job of getting to the rim and Chesha Phoenix again, another turnover. Well, we were talking about what a good job they'd done <laughs> three minutes ago and suddenly they've got five turnovers. Well, if you turn it over, you want to throw it into the crowd, though. I mean, yeah, so yeah, yeah, that's, that's yeah. one benefit there is that it wasn't a live ball turnover. But slow down a little bit and take care of it. Those are looking for room along the baseline. Out to Dirk Williams in the corner for three. Well, they dodged a couple of bullets earlier, but finally got caught on an open three. Bowser's penetration is effective. He's getting hit to the heart of the defense, and 
finds an open Dirk Williams in the corner. 12 points personal for him. An overhelp there by Austin. I don't think you need to come all the way over there with two guys, you know, with Cabos. It didn't look like he was going to shoot, and that's one thing you can't do against the Lions. You know, you can't overhelp, and they overhelped on the wrong guy, and he made a pay. Well, Dirk Williams, 5 of 7, shooting for his 12 points. He's certainly been the main offensive threat for the Lions in this first half. Cheshire led by double figures a little earlier in this quarter, but London reeling them back in. And it's a relatively low scoring game. Look for London here to play some type of matchup zone or zone. He said one possession in the timeout. They're going to play a defense for one possession and change. To see if Cheshire recognizes that. Right. Right. Carry. Get down the lane. Good finish from Kyle Perry. That's really tough, and that's what you want to do against the zone. You want to find the gaps, you want to exploit them, you want to attack them. And Cole Carey is one of the best players at doing that in this league. Tawia hands it off to Robinson. Cross to Dirk Williams off the mark. Name all right. Carey in the corner. Turns down the three. Nice pass. And Austin is there for him. Another good layup from Austin. He can go on this side. He can go on that side. He's got him all on his back. Good play there from Teddy to find him. And Austin, a great finisher again. This is a really good job, doesn't he, of knowing when Teddy Alcaraco is attacking the rim as well. Instead of being stuck in the corner for the open three, he actually attacks the rim. He comes towards the rim. So the defense can't really see him and get another tough finish inside. Well, it's forced James Beard to call a timeout here with three minutes and ten seconds to go. And the lead back out to seven. Teddy Okorafo, it's penetration there. When he attacks the rim, that takes Chris Towery out of the equation because Chris Towery is contesting his shot. That's a good six, nine, six, ten that Larry Austin Jr. doesn't have to worry about when he's shooting inside. Important part of the game here. You know, you look at the score and you think, hey, Cheshire could extend this or London could get back into this. These are the moments of these finals where you really have to make a move. You know, if you're London here, you gotta stop the bleeding. And you gotta, you know, go into halftime a little bit closer. You don't want Cheshire to get out too big of a lead. What we saw in the cup final, you guys, the way you finished last three, three or three minutes of that cup final, suddenly you went into the half with a big lead. Certainly can change. You know, what goes on in that second half and how you have to play. James there will be hoping for a good final three minutes to this first half for his team. As Jordan Williams brings it across midcourt. Well, Williams has a good matchup here with Dickerson. Let's see. Oh. Right, gives it back to uh, Dirk Williams and it's laid in by Kajina. Jordan Williams, excellent passer of the basketball. Not only can he beat you by going to the basket and using that body, but he sees the opening, sees the cutters. Great look from him there. Right, to carry, one extra pass to Oki Raffle. Time running down on the offense, gets to the rim. There's John Austin again to put it back in. Three Cheshire Phoenix players clashing the offensive glass. When they're attacking the rim, good things are happening. Sometimes not from the initial layoff itself, but the activity what follows. Here's Jordan Williams. 
looking for his options. Tries to go it himself, and a reach round from Dickerson is going to be his first foul. Now here you see Ocharovia coming back in, maybe to to stop Williams, because Williams against Dickerson there looks like a, a matchup that London will continue to go to. So pretty good sub here from Coach Thomas to get Ocharovia back in to, to slow down Williams. Rosa looking to penetrate again, he shot his block, and that's out of bounds for a Cheshire ball. Great job from Neymar Wright. I thought Neymar Wright got up to him a little bit too too much. He's not really a shooter, but Neymar's right foot speed was able to stay with him there and cause Cabosta into the turnover. Right. Back to carry inside to Ocherovi and a reach in foul on Jordan Williams. It's a great look and his substitution made Archerovia because of the value he can have on the defensive end, but the offensive end also just takes up so much space. Good hands and nice touch around the rim. Again, gets the defense to commit the foul. Only eight minutes so far from Kelly in the first half. Two fouls on him, so you know that was a he's a different team underneath that basket when he's out there. Changes so many shots, and you can see now with Cheshire when he's off the floor how they can get closer to the rim and score. Well, Jordan Williams just became the third Lion to pick up two fouls alongside Kelly and Martin who are on the bench and it's going to send him to the bench as well as Tawia checks back in. That's a really interesting point. I'll be really intrigued just to see how Kyler Kelly introduces this game, reintroduces this game in the second half because he's a player for me, it's, and a lot of it's mental. You know, does he feel like playing? Does he fancy the challenge? Because when he does, he changes everything and everything and everything around the rim. And that's what you want against a team like Cheshire. Larry Austin Jr. going to the rim. Kyle Kerry going to the rim. Oh, Doug Williams with the throw down. Wow. Another guy going to the rim. That's a dry baseline. Beats Kerry. Boom. Nice finish. Name on right steps into the three. That is short. Right behind it. Had the perfect line. Here's Carey for three. Carey knocks it down. Had a great shooting game against the last And he's improved in that area. You know, last year you stay off for him. He's not really going to shoot it. This year he's come out and he makes you pay. It's Doug Williams. He can make you pay as well, and he does. <laughs> this me. Doug Williams, a guy you have to locate. 17 points personal for him. He is carrying the load for the London Lions right now. 17. The rest of his team have 16 combined. Ochorobia down to uh, sorry, Ricky Raffle down to Ochorobia and the foul is called. Mike Ochorobia doing a good job once he rolls to the basket of getting good position. That's two times in a row where he's used that big body in the lane to get the position. A good job from Teddy to find him to draw another foul. Talked about Kelly being on the bench and Martin and Williams on, on two fouls. In a cup final, do you approach it differently in terms of how much leeway you give the guys in a in that situation yeah i think so i mean every situation every game is different but yeah in a cup final you know you don't want to lose the game with the with the bullets on the bench if you yeah. know what i mean you want to get them out there um so yeah you will but i mean if we get to the half here with just two we could let them roll in the second half expect big minutes from kelly in the second half i suppose you get the other thing of you know does he get cold because he's been sat there be half an hour between action but we'll see in the second half, is Cabozo open for three. Tavia again on the offensive glass, using his strength for the finish. Such a, a brute force there, and a really good use of his body as well. You see the defender just bounce off him, and he makes the easy lay -in. Last couple of seconds of the first half here. Carey for three, misses. And that will do it. Well, the Cheshire Phoenix led by as many as ten, but they will go into the half with only a five-point lead. It's 35-40 at the end of the second quarter here in Glasgow. And then I think both teams will be reasonably happy here. London will feel, you know, we've had this bit of foul trouble. We could have got further behind. Cheshire have played well. Yeah, I think so. I think both teams will go in, have a positive mindset. And it'll be interesting to see now with London with Kelly back on the floor, Martin back on the floor, if they can control that paint. And 
with Cheshire, they got to find a way to slow down Dirk Williams. I mean, he's the guy right now that's uh, putting London in the position to win the game. Just four of 12 from the three-point line for the London Lions in the first half. The rebounding battle is even with both of them getting on the offensive glass as well. But you can uh, see the difference in the point in the paint, 24 to 14 in favor of the Cheshire Phoenix. Let's get some reaction. Michael Chirobia is with Drew. Thanks, Dan. Mike, you came in as underdogs but made a statement to this final. Sum up that first half for us. Um, we believe, you know, and we, we've worked hard to get here. And we're, we're not going to let up now, so we won't be satisfied with anything else in a win. And you seem to be everywhere, particularly on the offensive glass. How have you been able to be such a force on that side of the ball? Um, just energy, you know, and just uh, winning my winning my one-on-ones with my, with my defender and make sure that I get the better of them. And phenomenal team defense, holding the league's number one offense to 35 points. How have you been able to contain the Lions? Uh, just energy, energy and the defense. Uh, we, uh, we said in the locker room, we're not going to win the championship unless we take deep, so that was our priority. And lastly, any second half adjustments? Uh, no, just keep it the same. Keep it the same. Keep being aggressive at the glass. We've missed a few, but keep going. It'll drop. Thanks for your time, Mike. Good Thank luck you. in the second half. Thank you. Yeah, good first half for the Phoenix. They were underdogs going into this game, but they take the lead after two quarters. 40-35 Cheshire over London. Reaction and analysis coming next. Welcome back to Glasgow and at halftime in the men's PBL Trophy Final. The Phoenix surprise leaders, some might say. Remember, they came into this game as the underdogs, but they have played with great spirit, poise, and lead the Lions by five at halftime. Pretty even affair all round. If you look at the match stats, shooting narrowly, I guess, London, you look at the total rebounds there that is all square ditto assists as well so very little to choose between the two sides with those metrics 
But then you take a look at the points in the paint and Kieran Achara, that is a, an obvious edge for Cheshire. Yeah, we mentioned it at the top, you know, that they've got some relentless players, so Larry Austin, Ocherobe inside, Neymon right, finding the ways to attack the basket, especially when Kyler Kelly got into some foul trouble. They had a free reign at the basket, he's a big time shot blocker. They put their head down, got to the basket and put some points in the, uh, got those points in the paint. All of those players that Kieran mentioned, Mike, demonstrating a great amount of energy in the first half and that is, is perhaps the that's what you led over to me in the first few minutes of watching the game and said you really love the energy Cheshire are demonstrating yeah and I think that's something that coach Ben Thomas you know instills in this team they're a scrappy team you know you guys got you got guys like Austin and Dickerson and Kerry they're, they're scrappy they like it to get ugly they want to fight in there get get those you know offensive rebounds get those putbacks and that's what they're doing today speaking of offensive rebounds let's go to Mike Ocherobia first things first if we're looking at uh, some of the players to key in on in the first half he had well a, an instrumental involvement very early on didn't he really making his presence felt like oh yeah I mean I've, I've had the pleasure of having to guard this guy this season and, and he is one strong man uh, and you know when he gets two feet in the paint and he gets the ball he's pretty confident with, with, with his little hook shot he attacks the, the, the boards hard and, and he's just tough. Good screen and roll guy. Strong. He exploited the London defense early on, forcing him to make adjustments, Kieran. Yeah, it was really interesting to see because I knew London were going to play some zone. I mean, they were dropping back into the zone. The biggest thing in zone is actually who you guard to box out in those situations. Mike took advantage of that. You know, he, he saw the open gaps, got those offensive rebounds and get those, those second chance opportunities to, to Cheshire Phoenix. So he had a big half. So did Larry Austin, as you mentioned earlier. Uh, an explosive player we knew he was going to be, uh, averaging almost 15 a game, and he seemed to warm up as the game went on, Mike. Yeah, he definitely did, and that's where he's most comfortable when he's going downhill at, at the basket. You know, he had a couple little uh, uh, and one plays here where he's finishing. That's just going to give him more energy, more confidence attacking the basket. But you know, not the best shooter, but he knows his strength and, and downhill towards the basket, pretty athletic, can finish around the rim. And he's got guys around him that can exploit. Uh, defensively, Kieran, how do you think they can look to contain him in the second half? I guess you know, they were close to it a couple of times, getting the positioning right. You can take charges on this guy. You know, when he's driving to the basket you know, at, at such speed, being able to step up and put your body on the line, that get him in the foul trouble, and if he's sitting down, he can he can't be scoring. Okay, uh, in terms of the Lions, uh, Dirk Williams, unsurprisingly, some might say has been the standout player offensively anyway for the London Lions. How effective, first of all, Kieran, have uh, the Cheshire defense been in holding those Lions three-point attempts down? Because that's of course where Dirk loves to feast. They were doing a good job earlier on, I think, and then all of a sudden, Dirk just got going, you know, and it's a player you cannot take your, your eyes off Dirk, off Dirk Williams. His, his movement off the ball has improved drastically. Now, he's not just scoring on the ball, now he can score off the ball, he's getting to the right spots, he knows he gets his spacing right, but you cannot allow, uh, uh, from a defensive perspective, to switch off on, on Dirk Williams, because as you can see, you will get punished. Not a massive deficit, of course, Mike, so we've got to... Uh, say I've got to ask, say this and ask this with a pinch of salt, but if London are going to get back into this, go on to win this trophy, do you get a sense that Dirk Williams has got to have a red letter afternoon? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's only Dirk, though. Dirk, Dirk's done his job. He scored 17 points in this first half, and I think, you know, he's a player that once he gets hot, he stays hot, and he'll continue to do that through the second half, but I think it's the, the supporting cast around him needs to step up. You know, Dirk's really the only guy for me that's really stepped up here, so we need guys like Cugini and their bigs to really get going and get some rhythm to, to put some points on the board. What do you make? We talked a lot about the, the strength and depth or lack of, relatively speaking, for London going into this game. What have you made, made of the, the rotation, some of the younger players coming in? Yeah, I think I, I, I love to see it. You know, we always like to see young British talent entering the league and, and making their mark, um, and you know, we've seen a little bit of that today. Uh, we've also seen some of the older players like Justin Robinson. I think Justin Robinson's done done a good job. We've seen some, some good flashes from him. We're going to need some see some more because he's their uh, primary playmaker in this game. Let's drill down more into the battle of the floor, General, something we inevitably talked about in pre-game. Let's start with Teddy O first. What have you made of, of his first half, Kieran? It's composed. You know, I love this little snake dribble. We talked about him in the, in the, in the pick and roll. He finds a way to split here. We call it a little snake dribble. 
and it makes it so difficult for the defense because he's, he's in the heart of the defense, but still having eyes on the back of his head to make plays as well, which is you know, that's, that's a, an elite, elite level pass there. The no look pass there at the end, just such clutch performance. And Justin Robinson, uh, we mentioned he had injury issues, uh, of course, coming back from a significant injury, uh, suffered at the end of last season. Do you get the sense, Mike, he's back to his best, back to full strength? Maybe not to 100%, but but I think, like like I said, we've seen flashes of that today. Uh, coming off an injury, especially when you you know a little bit of an older player, is, is always tough, and to get, get get your rhythm going, especially with a team that's as deep as London is. You know, he's he's in a, a bigger rotation now, not playing as many minutes, but. Like I said, he's you know two-time MVP. This this guy has all the confidence in the world. We know we can do it. He can do it. We've seen it before. And like I said, we've seen flashes of it today. Kieran, in terms of what Rob Paternostra mentioned in comms, right at the end, he said both coaches would be relatively happy with their first-half performances. Do you agree? I do agree. I think a low-scoring game, from a Lions perspective, they were you know they looked down and out for a little bit. You know they, they regrouped, got some scoring prowess, and, and Dirk Williams showing what he can do. And I think the confidence is building. But from a Cheshire perspective, they're they're leading. They've got a lead at halftime. You know they've got a great uh, fan uh, uh, in support today. They are happy. They're content. They know they can attack downhill. They're relentless with it. So I think both teams right now are, are, are happy where they're at. And it's just obviously this second half third quarter is going to be pivotal. Well, the good news is it is on its way. We're about to get the second half rolling here in Glasgow. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Glasgow, where the Phoenix lead the Lions 40 to 35 at the half. The second piece of BBL silverware about to be decided over the next 90 minutes and change. So let's hand back over to our commentary team. Rob Padanostro is still alongside Andro and Dan Rand. Thank you very much. Now, Rob, I wanted to ask you a question because along the lines, 
There was less than three minutes left of halftime when they come out. Obviously, you have to sit down with 90 seconds to go. They barely got a shot up there. Yeah, it's a long way to the locker room here at the Emirates Arena. So you have to understand that, you know, it's going to be a long way back. And uh, they did come out late. They probably took one or two shots each. So it'll be interesting to see how they start in the second half. Well, the Cheshire Phoenix will start with possession of the ball. They lead by five as we begin the second half. The only one who had a free pass not to shoot at halftime was Dirk Williams. Everyone else should be getting reps in, by the way. Uh, even Dirk only got one shot up. I'm not sure Kajini shot. He took a shot. He was last man out. Well, Dirk's got 17 points at halftime. Well, yeah, yeah. He doesn't need any more reps. There's Bradley driving quick and oh, the two-handed throwdown from Levi Bradley. Again, Levi Bradley's went left. Scout report, you've got to take away that left hand, but he's got past this defender. Nice dunk finish. Robinson trying to find some room. Gets out to Dirk Williams. Back to Justin Robinson. Checks his feet but misses the three. And that came off Martin for a Cheshire ball. Be careful, Chester. You know, you're sending two guys over there at Robinson. He was able to attack Ochirobi, and Austin had the help. And giving up that open look, maybe the Dirk. You got to be careful there, because that's where it'll hurt you. Here's Austin. With the wrap ball. Working with Ochirobi on the pick and roll. Shot clock getting low here. He's got to find some way of getting it up. He's found a wide open Bradley on the shot clock buzzer. And again, Ocherovia got, uh, well, some disruption in there. Oh, I'm not quite sure how that happened from a defensive perspective. A really good on board defense. I felt like when Justin Robinson stayed with Rocker F all the whole way. But then Levi Bradley just pops up wide open for a three. Cheshire. Get us back underway. Raffle driving hard up the glass. Oh, not much, uh, not much uh, to say. Upper Raffle just found a way. It's a straight line drive to the basket. And London Lions have to adjust something here on defense because they're leaking baskets. Got Williams, I think, drove the might have got a little piece on that. He did. And that's what happens though when Ochirobia has to come over. Kelly's so good at following up so long to see if they can get Kelly involved. Teddy's last shot was his fifth of the game. Be interesting to see if Teddy gets a little more aggressive here in the second half. Justin Robinson call for the foul. First foul. Bradley for three. Off the mark. Dirk Williams with the rebound. Dirk in transition. Going all the way. Oh, but he misses the lane. There's Austin going the other way. A grapple. Rebound by Bradley. And eventually. No, it still won't go in. Cheshire somehow have the ball back. Short. And friendly pass for Rock. Good work from Chester, aggressive, going after it, not giving up on the play. All of them, guards, big guys. Good start to the second half. Robinson. Gets a little room and hits the three. <laughs> Patience and persistence there from Justin Robinson. He was able to use that screen from Kyler Kelly. Which created enough space there for him to get it off. Big shot. And Robinson just asked for a sub on his way down court as Kaboza comes over to the table. A little bit gassed early on here in the third quarter. Short clock. With the raffle. Three! Raffles in. Yeah, lined it up that time. Short on the last one. He said, I'm not going to be short this time. And got over the front of the rim. More aggressive, Teddy O'Brakafor. Robinson, Kajini steps back. He misses. Cheshire in the open court. Austin, none better on their team. Oh! 
And he finishes again. A great play from Teddy. That's the guy you give it to in transition. If he has a step, you give it to him because he's quick, fast, and again, nobody from that size can finish as well as Larry Austin at the basket. He's just so good in the open floor and contact irrelevant to him. He, 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 like he relishes it. He looks for it. He looks for challengers looking to block his shot. So comfortable in that attack to the rim. Biggest lead of the game for the Cheshire Phoenix at 12. Williams. Eugenie. Martin. Ray Short. A good rebound from Kabosa who scores. And we're going to line for bonus. Well, Kabosa's standing out here because he's applying and he's playing with energy. I don't see a lot of the other guys doing that right now. And, and that's just a, a, a mental commitment to, to, to salvage in this game. And Kabosa's energy is just enough. A big play there. They needed that. You know, they were rocking. They could have had a timeout coming shortly. Uh, but it's interesting. You know, remember, uh, London did play on, on, Wednesday, uh, on Wednesday night uh, against Manchester. Was it Thursday or Wednesday? Thursday. Thursday, sorry. Thursday night. And then traveled up here after that. So they've been on the road for a few days, whereas Chester, you know, played Sunday. So we'll see. And, uh, and again, remember how many games these guys have played yeah. this year. So it'll be interesting to see what they have left in the tank down the stretch. Yeah, you kind of forget the volume given uh, all those games they played in Europe, the Lions. Last few seconds of the shot clock. With the raffle, trying to go to work. He's run out of time. Did he get that off? Well, oh, there's a foul in there. That was think, close, wasn't it? Yeah, I think the referee lost his whistle, so their hand went up. To try and blow his whistle. Yeah, yeah, there's a little spike down before the backboard lit up, so it'll be two shots for Oki Rapport. Interesting two shots there. Um, didn't release the ball, Austin, did he? No, no, the foul was put on the initial shot, not on oh, the. Teddy. Okay, yeah, yeah. good. Okay, gotcha. They've uh, left a few out there, haven't they, from the free throw line? Second one bobbles in for them. Nine for 15. Nope, 10. Missed six from the free throw line. Kabosa, you're a step and gets it to Talia. Talia is foul. As the Raffle said, yeah, that was on me. A great foul there. That should be an and one. It should be a, an and one. Chris Talia, again, one of the more stronger players in the league. And it's, it all comes from Kabosa again. It's just his, his energy and his ability to, to penetrate and get in the heart of the defense. Well, it'll be interesting to see how Cheshire plays him, though. You know, they're running at him on the perimeter. To, he's got that quickness. You have to play him a little bit differently. He doesn't really look like he wants to take that three-point shot. But give him credit for getting in the lane and making plays so far in his third quarter. Ochoa out of bounds. Five minutes to play. Cheshire leading by nine here in the third quarter. London just hanging about here. Cheshire can't get away. Williams to Williams out to Kabosa for three. Rebound Austin. That was his first three-point shot of today, and it was a good look, but again, I think he's a guy that wants to penetrate. He wants to be able to contrate, uh, create off the penetration. Step back from Teddy. 
little short, but it's tipped in once again on the offensive glass. He's fourth of the game, Michael Chirobia. So huge for the Phoenix to have him in there, doubling up some of those offensive rebounds. And it's a backbreaker, too, for the defense who play defense. You know, 20, 22 seconds there. To Genie, to Williams. Shot clock. Needs to go up here. That's go up from Kajini for two. Great pass from Caboza. Again, getting in the lane and making some plays. London's done a pretty good job defensively. They haven't finished the job off, but a lot of late, pose long possessions for Cheshire. Struggling to get good looks over the last few times down the floor. Kajini called for his first foul of the game. 12 offensive rebounds for Cheshire Phoenix. That's a, it's a killer, especially after you play defense. But again, 20, 20 something seconds of a shot clock, and that happens. 15 second chance points out of that, too. Raffle at top of the key. I'm not sure if he was going to get another one there. He's in a good position, but it went over his head. Good hands from Austin to knock it loose. Robinson steps into that three. It's way off the mark. Austin trying to thread the needle. Robinson gets there. Boser is out in front. They're chasing him back. That's going to be an unsportsmanlike foul. Too hard from Larry Austin. Brave take from Cabosa though, and a good outlet pass. I hope, he, I hope he's okay. He's got a fearless take to the rim. Too bad plays from Austin there. The pass up the floor was bad for the turnover. They were in good position. They had some numbers, and then you can't make this play. You know that from behind. Well, two free throws and then possession of the ball as a result of the unsportsmanlike foul. Those are the things, aren't they? That sometimes it's just little moments in games to play it in finals where you know they got a fast break there if they score they're up double figures instead it's two points off potentially another three it could be a four point game here and Caboza again you know we're talking about him a lot now but 13 minutes played already from him you know in a final and doing a pretty good job six points five rebounds four assists not a bad stat line for the young man Turned over though by the Lions. Inside to Chirovia. It's a good challenge by Tawia. Another guy has given him some pretty good minutes. Tawia today hasn't played much recently. Robinson caught on the three. He will go to the line for some foul shots. So we got to dig deep here now and use some mental resilience. Trisha Phoenix, a couple silly fouls here. And this one, never, never a good idea to foul a three-point shooter. And Justin Robinson will say thank you very much, having three opportunities now at the free throw line. Just feels like Cheshire have threatened to get away two or three times and they've not been able to. London hanging about. I said it before, they're a dangerous team. There'll be one more free throw here. They're a dangerous team to leave hanging about. This goes in, it's a four point game. <laughs> Justin Robinson makes them all. There is four points separating the team. Cheshire had a comfortable lead earlier in this quarter, but they just can't keep the Lions at bay. Bradley again is late in the shot clock. Carey has to take the three. Big shot from Carl Carey. Huge shot from Carey. He got the arc on it that he needed. They've been short a little bit. And London with the overhelp and Carey buries it. Again, late shot clock situation. They get scored on. 
Williams. Spencer Tawia on the jump hook. That's a good matchup for Tawia against Bradley. He could get his position down there. And Chris has a little nice jump hook there, too, when he gets it. Good minutes from him. Yeah, he's been solid. And again, it's good confidence from him growing. And surely he could be a, a figure now that the London Lions look to. A little reach over the back from Chris Tawia. The uh, team foul shots. It is the fifth. The referee's just getting clarification from the table, but it will be two shots for Ocherovia. Cheshire struggled today at the foul line, nine for 15 so far. And in these type of games, in any game, really, you got to make those free throws. Especially that was a gift from London there. They had really nothing going on. The foul them there, you got to make it pay. Well, you saw, was it last week or the week before? They can struggle from the free throw line at times. Missed a lot at the Morningside Arena against Rob and his riders. Second was a big slap, but it goes in. It's all that matters. Six point Phoenix lead. 100 seconds to play here in the third. Those are slips, but keeps his dribble. Spins through the lane, dishes off to Kajimi. Wow. 20 year old Bradley Caboza. Great spin inside there, and Kajini again, never staying still. Nice cut. Carey for another three. Oh, halfway down for Kyle Carey. Robinson. Kajini. Short. I felt like Kajini gave up a shot there. He, he had enough space to get that one off. Turned him down. And instead, trying to shoot over six for eight, Mike Kotsarovia. Well, you know, once he gets the ball in the open court, where Larry Austin is going. But uh, that doesn't mean you can stop him from doing so. And he's got four defensive rebounds as well today. So he's the kind of guy that takes it off the rim and pushes it up the floor. And that's very dangerous when you have a guy that you don't even need the outlet. You just take it right up the floor with speed. Uh, and Austin's been able to do that today. Chris Tawia replaced uh, by Ryan Martin. Tawia is a plus 10, by the way, in the 10 minutes he's been on court. Wow. He's had a good game, solid game. Kyler Kelly, 12 minutes, he's played all day. You've got to question his his health or his, his you know, I guess, mental buy into this game. But Coach Rear is certainly going with uh, other options right now. Here's Robinson. Last 20 seconds of the first quarter. Third quarter, even. Kaboza got a lot of time. Doesn't knock it down. Great work from Ocherovia. And Cheshire come away with it. That's not a great pass. Robinson with the steal. Moves on to Kajini. He misses. I think he thought the clock was about to expire. He had a bit more time. Well, the Cheshire Phoenix still lead this ball game. They lead by six, but the London Lions are not going away. They are trying to hang on to this BBL trophy. It's still very much in the balance here in Glasgow. 55-61 at the end of the third quarter. Can Cheshire get their fifth trophy or will London come back and defend their title? Find out after this break.
Welcome back to Glasgow. Cheshire led by as many as 12. Their lead is half that right now. And London trying to go to work at cutting some more points out of that. Ooh, Austin got a little hand on that. I like those little plays. Okay, it doesn't give your team possession of the ball, but I just I like that coming out of a, a, a break. You know, shows the, the other team you're here. It's going to be tough for you to get something out the back to the basket. Kurt Williams, radar unusually off. Well, he's on 17 points. He had 17 points at half time. Wasn't really a, a good third quarter for him in terms of getting good looks. Gary in the corner. Okay, Raffle for three. Austin on the offensive glass. Puts it back. Wow, what a unique player Larry Austin is. It's hard to find someone like him. He's so different. You know, he impacts the game in so many different ways that a guard usually does. And that was a heck of a play from him. 19 points, 8 rebounds, 4 of them offensively. Martin for 3. So I would say London's missing someone like that. Josh Ward Hibbert is that type of guy. He's an unorthodox, you know, what positions is he? You know, he does things like that and you, you feel like he could add value to this London Lions team if healthy. Here's Austin again to the basket. 21 now for him. Unplayable and again going straight at Jordan Williams. Leads back to double figures. Martin has had a rough game. He has, he struggled and I think his, his attitude was good at the beginning of the game, his activity was there, but it just hasn't went his way. And you wonder here if a timeout will be coming if they score. Let's get Robinson back in the game. It's right. Oh, an unsportsmanlike foul is to call a thing on the baseline. It is an unsportsmanlike foul called on Jordan wow. Williams. Let's have another look at this. Oh, I'm not sure. About I, that. I'm, I'm wow. sure that's not an unsportsmanlike foul. I don't, I don't understand why that's called that way. Wow. Yeah, not for me. No, not for Jordan Williams either. It's uh, essentially the, the way the only way you can get an unsportsmanlike foul in a shot like that is if it's deemed too rough, basically coming down uh, on the on the player. Oh, it's too rough. Undue roughness. Undue roughness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. We must be sitting there thinking, what has happened to this game? <laughs> Here's the Talia coming in for Jordan Williams, who's uh, unsportsmanlike foul with his third. Well, and that's a prime example of what, what I meant by you've got a guy back, but is he really back? You know, Jordan Williams been plagued by injuries, and again, a couple of uncharacteristic plays from him on offense. He just doesn't look like him, himself. Late shot clock again. Right in an awful spot, slips, and it's a 24-second violation. That's the problem there. They're playing zone, and they're just passing it around the per perimeter. you got to find an area in the middle to collapse the defense, because if you just pass it around the perimeter like that, they should be able to match up with you for long stretches. I'm just going to get that patch wiped up. Well, not to turn the ball over there as well. I mean, you'd rather, <laughs> you'd rather just take that 24-second shot clock than turn the ball over in that area of the court. It's still a turnover. Yeah, but um, <laughs> you did well to not turn the ball over by turning the ball over. It's a good turnover. <laughs> good turnover. <laughs> turnover number nine for the line was a good one. Robinson harassed and harangued and. Trying to find something. Can't make the three. Austin trying to get there. Diving on the floor is Dirk Williams. And Austin fighting for it. Martin has it now. And there's a foul on Karen. And Larry Austin all over the floor going after. Good job by both teams hustling for that ball. That could have been a layup at the other end. Good job by London to get it back. And not a bad foul there from Carey to stop the play. His third.
you look at the matchups, Carey guard and Ryan Martin, you would think that Martin could get some good position down there on him as a real size advantage. So Cherobia called for what is his first foul of the game. trying to post up, he can't get there. That was a little pass in the end. Derek Williams wide open for three, back iron. Austin has it. And for once, he decides they're not in a rush. That's as good a look as London Lions are going to get. Derek Williams stepping into that three. They're trying to... Uh, Ryan Martin had a mismatch down low and weren't able to get the ball to him. Options limited right now. Terry, good pass. Oh, Jerome, you're wide open. Oh, he blew the layup and then wedged it. Wow, well, wow, well, wow. Well. That was probably the easiest look he's had all game. Yeah, slipped out of his hands, it looks like. And, you know, they committed two people to the ball. And Ocherobia wide open. And there you see how that ball slipped out of his hands. And that's two today that Cheshire have missed from point blank range. Well, the only upside for them is the possession arrow is their way so they will get to keep the ball kyla kelly back into the game not seen him for a while right driving in driving hard and spinning it in for two wow i love the way he spun that ball in the basket and neymar right the quickness to get there and spin it in neymar that was with contact too. What an incredible take from Neymar right. Wow. Good finish. Well, the Cheshire fans are in full voice. Their team has the biggest lead of the ball game with only six and a half minutes remaining. The London Lions with a timeout. Coach Beer, what's he got to do here, Rob, to try and turn this 14-point deficit around? Well, I think offensively, obviously, they got to put some points on the board, no doubt about it. We know they haven't been effective all night. But I think defensively, you got to pick up the pace a little bit. You know, there's a lot of long offenses going on. And when you're down 14 in the fourth quarter, with this amount of time remaining, you want to kind of pick up the pace a little bit. So it'll be interesting to see if he puts the full court press on, something to speed Cheshire up. Because right now, Cheshire running a lot of the shot clock and converting at the end of that shot clock. And, you know, they got to get this game going to a, to a higher tempo right now. And then you've been in a position, big lead, seven minutes to go as a play you just got to try and park all of the thoughts of we're gonna we're gonna win this we're gonna win this and just keep playing until the buzzer sounds oh we well, i mean we were a coach to, to a wave regardless if you're up by 20 and you're down by 20 you play hard and i think you're, you're so close to players like mike archerobi have been on the, this final have lost previously players like him will know things can get bad very very quickly so you know you do anything and everything not to have any of those scares I don't think the uh, clock had started, shot clock had started. I'm going to take it back from the side, I think. Ocherobi was still on the bench. They only had four guys out oh, there. Oh, right. He hadn't actually made it out. No. After he's allowed the game to start. Stolen away by Okarapo. Kelly disappointed there, mad about that physical contact from right. Right blasted through that screen. Right blasted through the defense and finishing through the contact for that one. Wow, what a finish from right. Acrobatic over the best shot blocker in the league. That's two times in a row, Naaman. One time left, the other time right. Big time finish. You've got guys like Neymar Wright and Larry Austin Jr. attacking you time after time after time, and they've gone. They've had their way when at the rim. Neymar Wright converts the three point play. It is a 17 point hole for the London Lions. Robinson and it's through 
the hands of Kelly was probably a bit low for him. He was open too, you know, they ran that little side pick and roll on the open side, and he's there. Doesn't do a good job of going down to get it. He's got to catch it, you, you, you know, you have to, it's one of those ones too, it's, it's a mental thing, you've got to be ready. As soon as you come off that screen, it's hard, because you've got to change, you know, your speed, your whole body change your whole head, but you've got to keep your eyes on the ball. Austin on the glass again, another offensive rebound for Larry Austin, he's fifth of the game, he has himself a double-double. And that's what happens there when you press, and they are pressing to speed up the game a little bit, but there are openings, and they do a good job there of getting a Dojo in, but again, Austin never gives up on a play, always attacking. Heck of a play. You've got to remember as well how instrumental he was up here. In the semi-final against Glasgow, leg one, he was the yeah. guy, the one guy, when the Phoenix were going through their troubles offensively, he was the one guy that kept things going, his energy, both ends of the floor, and boy is he being, boy is he continuing to reward them. And don't forget, he spent the whole second half guarding Dirk Williams as well. He's done a good job off the ball, yep. being aggressive, not letting him get great looks, great touches. So both ends of the floor, he's done a great job. Point lead. Foul forward off the ball. It's Dirk Williams who is trying to get free, and it's Ocherobi. It's only his second personal foul. It's Cheshire for me as well that looked like they're. You can see Ocherobi at the top of the key. Just a little I hear you, Walter. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Big guy loves to remind the guards if you're coming through. Got to get past me. Robinson misses everything. Carey, you could see that carry was ready to go, and then it was like, oh, wait a minute. There's only five and a half minutes to go. We're up 19. Take some air out of the ball. Now you got to take care of the ball. Once a good offense. And not Stole it away. No, no foul here. Dirk Williams hammers it in. It's the one thing. <laughs> You're right. The one thing that could get London Lions points in a hurry, and that's that. Dirk Williams in the open floor, unstoppable. I'd like to see Teddy come get the ball now and control the game here. You know, again, no rush. There he is. Welcome to pick and roll. And he's almost turned it over. Out to right for three. Offensive foul, Kyle Kelly with the illegal screen. And he, he almost had one the couple plays before that they didn't call, and that time, she, referee thought he used the body. Mm. A lot of, gotta call a lot of those. In real time, I thought, okay, offensive foul, but in slow one, I'm like, maybe it wasn't. It's a, yeah, a tough one. It's his fourth. Right, out to Austin. Austin driving hard to the hole. And even he couldn't quite spin that one in. He was stepped out of bounds. And there doesn't look to be too much belief right now in the team in black. No. Nope. You know, certainly looking at the body language. Still four minutes to go. You know, you got to get, get aggressive here. You don't want to do that, really. Put him on the line. It's going to be two shots, I think. Yep, that's the fifth. So it will be two free throws. Mind you, the way they shot free throws today. Yeah, yeah. It's just four minutes left, too. In the, we're in the penalty. You know, Phoenix could find themselves on the line quite a bit here. Eight missed free throws now. I mean, they're up 17, but you'd rather be up 25. Yep. I think those people would have settled for uh, an 18-point lead with four minutes to go, that's for sure. Robinson. Thrown away. 
I love the way Chester's played defense today, especially here in the second half. They've really turned it up. Every guy is really aggressive off the ball, working hard, working together. Great defensive performance so far. London have scored two points in the whole quarter, and again, it's been a credit to the Cheshire Phoenix. And it, uh, you felt like at that point in time as well, we'll come out of that timeout, uh, maybe with uh, seven minutes to go, six minutes to go. Cheshire was a team that played like they were down. They, they were the, the better energy both ends of the floor. They were winning the 50 50 balls. But since then, London have made error after error, and the, the body language, you're right, it's just about feel. It's just a, 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 a depressive vibe at the moment from, from, the, from the team. Hey, you look at Cheshire, and there's a team, they're a team that's lost three in a row they're under 500 in the league but they came here out on the court today acting like a team that was at the top of the table playing great basketball you know they, they have great body language all day on the bench supporting each other a very well deserved lead for them I, you know they've been the better than team most of the day well it certainly has been I mean, we take the last three games out of it. They have been in good form since the turn of the year. It took them a while to get going, but they are going, and they are three minutes and 40 seconds away from claiming a fifth BBL trophy title. Run and jump here from, from London. Foul on Robinson. Two free throws coming. Nice day so far from Naaman. Five for seven from the field. Four for five from the foul line. Fifteen points. It's been solid all game. I worried for the Phoenix when he didn't play last game. I, I thought he, he, that him, Phoenix missing Neymar right was, was bigger than, than the London Lions missing Isaiah Reese. And I thought if they didn't have Neymar right, I thought they would really, really struggle. And, you know, proven my point to an extent here. He's, he, again, he's been so efficient. But I think he's been a guy, too, just a, a ringleader, just good energy. He's a lead by example, as Larry Austin's been today. 20 points in favor of the Phoenix. Robinson. William out to Cabosa. It's thrown away. Yeah, he got to shoot that. Got a good look there, but good defense from Cheshire. They understand who you can help off and who you can't. And they've been very smart on that end of the floor today. Last few seconds of the shot clock. Right now, looking to go to work. Kelly and foul. Ocharobi having a real battle. There's a there. foul called on one of them. It's uh, Michael Ocharobia who got called for the foul. It's not. Here, it's inside there. He's just giving him on the variety of screen. That's not something you need right now if you're a Cheshire. <laughs> you know, back up. Let the clock go. Come on. Well, they probably would have ended up with a 24-second uh, violation. Robinson. Robinson. Derek Williams for three. We just haven't got enough of that in the second half. Derek Williams, 22 points personal for him. And again, he carried such... So much of the load there in the first half, he just he hasn't had that many looks, especially as good as that in the second half. Just five points for him in the second half. Again, the longer the offense, the better as far as Cheshire are concerned. And Hoki takes 22 seconds off the clock and adds two points to the score. So difficult, and Teddy Okarafo just go right at Tyler Kelly. Here's Kelly, drops it in for two. Well, Trier into the game for the first time. 
And Justin Robinson having to play at 31 minutes, and you know, we, this isn't the end of the season, guys. This is a, there's a whole lot of senior games left to go, and you know, how long is Isaiah Reese going to be out for? And Andre Lockhart not featuring again today, so point guards in short supply. And Justin Robinson coming back from injury himself. Name on right will go to the free throw line. A difficult night for Gagini as well today. You know, he's 0 for 5 from the three point line, and you know, he's as pure as a shooter as you're going to see. You, know, you, you, you would hire a guy off that just on that skill set alone, and he just he hasn't been able to get it going for his team today. Well, when you look at the Lions, there's no doubt that without Reese, it, it, they don't get as many good looks. I mean, he was just a master at the pick and roll and getting in the lane. He's such a weapon offensively, too, to score himself that you have to commit guys. And without Reese, you know, those guys that shoot the ball on the perimeter aren't getting the same kind of look. So they had to try to find different ways to score today. And, it just it just wasn't their day on the offensive end. They really struggled to put the ball in from the inside, from the outside. But yeah, they, you know, talking about uh, missing a player, you know, a player like Reese that can get you in the lane and make those great passes, and you, know, you miss him when he's gone. Well, six of 23, the Lions from the three-point line, which is fewer than their average, both in terms of takes and a long way off the makes as well. 41% field goal shooting overall. Tough to win a game at that sort of number. Dirk Williams misses everything. And Cheshire are a few moments away here. And Jerovia driving hard. And he will shoot too. And Kyla Kelly's afternoon is done. When you play at a place like this, and I know we spoke about it at halftime, you know, not getting a great look at shooting at this basket before you go out there. Maybe it had an effect well, because they shot a lot of air balls yeah. here in the second half. You know, a lot of misses that were way off. And, you know, it's just tough. You know, being in here many times, playing in here many times, it's a tough place to shoot. You really have to get the sight lines. And, you know, London really couldn't couldn't make them. They had some open ones that you know, they missed badly. Four points, three rebounds, one assist. Biggest number on his stat line is the fouls. They needed a big game from him today. He just wasn't able to. But he's a, his level of athleticism and size can, can really change us. Well, the Cheshire fans are on their feet behind us. Those players who hadn't yet come into the game have come into the game, which is the sign that Ben Thomas, with one minute and 12 seconds to go, is starting to celebrate. The fans are starting to celebrate. The players are starting to celebrate. Get that shot up. First touch of the three is up. And Graham, but it's Let it fly. A big fan of Robbie Graham too. I think he's get, he's been given some uh, opportunities this year, and he's, he's made the most of uh, some of those games. Charlie with the rebound. The Bozer commits the foul. Just delaying the agony, really. It's two more free throws. Uh, credit to the coaching staff as well coming into this game. I think they've prepared very, very well. And Ben Thomas will be licking his lips and <laughs> getting an opportunity to get his hands on that trophy. But also, Danny Byrne, remember, former head coach in the BBL with, with Manchester and uh, from Plymouth as well, my, my hometown. I actually played on the, uh, the same local league team as him when I was a, when I was a young, young lad. Wow, that must have been a tough team there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what was the record? I'm beaten. All right. <laughs> Well, the Cheshire fans have been really loud all the way through the game. It is always a great atmosphere when you go to Ellsmere Court as well. And they brought that atmosphere here to the Emirates. Yeah, great fans there, great volunteers as well. Long-time volunteers. You know, I've been going up there for a long, long time, 20-plus years, and just some great people that love their basketball. And they've had some great days in their history, and this one will be another one to add to the list. And, and for Coach Thomas, a, a second title, having won uh, the trophy against Worcester, um, what was it, four or five years Cup. ago? Yeah. Cup, sorry, yeah. 
that cup. They won the cup a few years ago and, you know, came here today. And they knew they had a good opportunity today, right? You know, you watched that game the other night, London, and, you know, those players must have been saying, hey, we get this team today. And, you know, I saw that when they walked in the room today. You could see that they had that belief that they were going to get them, and, and they did. And they certainly did. And the shot clock is switched off. And assuming London don't commit a foul, all Cheshire have to do is get it over the halfway line, which they're struggling with, but Robbie Graham does do that. And the Cheshire Phoenix will just let the last 10 seconds go. They will dribble it out. And now is the moment they can enjoy. The Cheshire Phoenix are the BBL Trophy champions. A punch in the air for Ben Thomas. The players celebrate wildly. A tremendous performance. They've led from tip to buzzer. They've done really well. And they will enjoy this tonight, that's for sure. This is the best feeling ever. And just sitting here watching it, I can't feel so happy for them, especially for the guys that haven't won before. That feeling when you first get your... Your, your, your piece of silverware as a pro because you know please believe me when i say there are very good pros very good basketball players that can go a whole career without winning anything yeah no question about it and i think that uh, one thing you know tonight is that ride back is gonna be a good time <laughs> i mean we've had some good times on the way back that uh, we'll never forget and that's the, what's so special is now you get to spend the time with the team coming back and with the fans and yeah like anthony said uh, not too many better feelings in life than, than winning the trophy and here's a club that in the off-season made some big noise, a lot of people talking them up. Slow start to the season, took them a while to get going in the league, but at the turn of the year seem to have turned the corner and have been rewarded here today. Yeah, good talent on this roster. I mean, you know, you look at it, they have a team that has inside, outside, and players that can make plays from all over the court. And they had a good feel about the club, didn't they, at the beginning of the year? You know, that, that unity uh, and, and that togetherness. I think Coach Ben Thomas as well tried made an extra effort to, to have that to, to make that happen as well. Like he understands the importance of culture. I think Ben Thomas has seen the success of the, the Leicester Riders, the, the Newcastle Eagles, and that's the, the nucleus of players uh, that, that, that have a culture, and, and he's trying to build that. Here's your mate. Give him a fist bump. <laughs> Give him a fist bump. Daddy, Daddy Bird. Bird. I'm real happy with Daddy Bird. He gets his first piece of silverware in the BBL. Congratulations. <laughs> well, for every happy story, there is a sad one that plays out at the other end of the floor. And that, those London Lions, well, it won't be such a joyous return back to the capital for them. A disappointing day, a disappointing performance. And it just sort of... They hung about and hung about. And in the end, Cheshire just put their foot down on the accelerator and pulled away. It's a London Lions team that are, are going through a really difficult patch right now. Your personnel changes, injuries, um, and I think they, they, they've lost the identity as well. We, we, we knew this London Lions team as a, a formidable offensive uh, team, right? And the, the only way really to, to, to beat them historically was to, to outscore them. Now you can beat them in a number of ways, and they don't really have that identity. Uh, you know, six, uh, 68 points here, and this is a team that we're, we're used to seeing 90 plus points. So I think they're struggling to find that identity uh, as the season goes on. Are they going to are they going to improve, or is this them now for the, for the rest of the season? Wow. Some happy faces in that bunch. Not so many right there. This is the moment. I mean, you, you've been here, unfortunately, stood in that line, just wanting to go. Can we get this over with and go home, please? It's the worst. It's the, it's the absolute worst. But you know. I, they will. They won't see this now. But to get to any final, you've, you've got to. You've got to take. You know, pride and, and be proud of yourselves for doing that. You know, the the road here was a uh, <laughs> was a tricky one. Let's just let's just leave it at that. And you know, again, the, the individuals that, that, that played their part in getting here, they should be proud of that at least. Well, they come up to get their mementos, and really, I mean, Turk Williams, particularly in the first half. He had 24 points, 17 of them in the first half. But after that, Lorenzo Cagini, who didn't make a three-point shot, and Justin Robinson, who was one of six for three, the only other two players in double figures. Just wasn't enough there. And, you know, you look at the... You look at the 
the, the, the team there, there's enough talent. They, they, it just wasn't their day today for, for whatever reason. Um, you, like you say, there was just a big drop off there from the two, productive players to, to not. Two of 17 shooting from three point range for everybody bar D uh, Dirk Williams. Wow, ouch. He was four of seven. Ouch. Yeah, that's, that's tough. And Dirk Williams, we've seen him just carry the, the team for games after games. And even on the highest stage too in Europe Cup, he was excellent. Today wasn't enough. His 24 points just wasn't enough. Well, today is about the Cheshire Phoenix and Larry Austin Jr. I don't think this will be his only trip to the table in the middle of the way he played today. <laughs> You're, uh, I think you're right, and uh, you know there's a number of guys that played really well today. I, I felt like both ends of the floor, um, but t t together they were the team that, that, that just deserved it. And I think it's top down. I think they prepared well and, and they've executed here today. But their energy was great. Name on right, probably a, a runner-up in the MVP rating. He was sensational. Shot the ball really well for his 18 points. He did, and you know. Little guys chipping us on my clutch, Arobia, you know, 12 points, 8 rebounds. I thought he was huge in, inside for them. And, and even Bradley, to an extent, this won't be his biggest scoring game, but it, he, he made the defense play honest because he can shoot the ball and he hit a three. And Ben Thomas grew up a Cheshire fan. This is uh, his dream job, really. And for the second time in his coaching career, he has a winner's medal. Well, now we get to find out who the most valuable player is. I'm guessing it's going to be Larry Austin, but we shall wait for official confirmation. 23 points, shooting 57%, a perfect from the line. Five offensive, five defensive, ten rebounds in total, three assists. Larry Austin Jr., the MVP of the 2022 BBL Trophy Final. He was excellent. MVP candidate for the whole BBL trophy, in my opinion. He was great. Especially in that semi-final, and today he was that catalyst for the strong performance of the Cheshire Phoenix. He certainly was. And now is the moment the captain, Teddy Okirapo, comes forward. He will pose for the pitchers, and he will receive the BBL trophy. And now he holds it aloft. The Cheshire Phoenix, the 2022 BBL Trophy Champs. Well, these are the moments as a player that you live for. He spent all his career working for moments like this, Teddy, to be the captain, to stand out there in front and to hold that trophy aloft. And he's done it in, in such a manner where he's represented his country, GB International, both caps and... Now he's played over overseas in Europe and he's able to come back and what's particularly difficult for the British players is the translation into the British BBL. This is a very unique league in that sense and he's done that. He's a better point guard than he was last year and here he is now with his first piece of silverware in the British Basketball League. And celebrating with the fans and they will have a pretty good trip home as well, those Cheshire Phoenix fans. What a great day it is. They've come in huge number up the M6 here to Glasgow and it was a sensational performance from their team they led throughout they totally deserved this win they did and I'm I'm so happy uh, for them as well and uh, the margin I think it doesn't really do it just I think if, if this was a 20 point game which it, which it almost was I think you could look at this team and think you know what that was a 20 point better team today on both ends of the floor their energy just carried it over and you know how much of a difference was it with those guys back there Dan you, you know we commented that there was a home crowd in Glasgow today for the Cheshire Phoenix let's get some reaction with our MVP Larry what an unbelievable feat the Phoenix take down the London Lions for the trophy 2022 finals. Describe your emotions. Man, it's a lot going on right now. You know, uh, we want some hardware. You know, that's great. You know, uh, our fans travel. You know, you see the crowd up there. It's like a home game for us. You know, they travel. You know, uh, we just got a lot of emotions right now. We're excited. You know, um, we're just excited. You know, we're going to soak it all in right now, man. And, and, and just, it's an unbelievable feeling. You know, everybody wants to come to a championship and win. You know, we're just all excited right now. And you should be. You were relentless all night. You rose to the occasion, finishing with 23 points, 10 rebounds, 3 assists. Walk me through your performance tonight. You know, um, just being aggressive, you know, on the offense and defensive end. You know, uh, defense is what's getting me going. You know, uh, I, love, I love the rebound. You know, uh, I like to be physical. But, you know, it's a team effort tonight, you know. All of us locked in on the defensive end, you know. 
everybody wasn't even talking about offense. All we was talking about was defensive end, you know. Even when it was a minute 35, you see us all talking about defense, you know, because defense is what's going to win championship games, and that's what's won us back tonight. Well, finally, speaking of defense, you guys put on a defensive masterpiece in which you guys seem to have that belief from the very start of this game. What was your mindset coming into tonight? Be the tougher team, you know, whoever wanted it the most was going to win tonight, you know. Uh, Playing defense, like I said, wins games. You know, uh, talent, talent. You know, is for on both sides. We have, both have talents, but the tougher team was going to win tonight, and I believe we were a tougher team. Thanks for entertaining us tonight. Congratulations. Go Thanks, celebrate. Man. I appreciate it, man. Thank you, guys. Nat, back to you. Hey, Mom. Congratulations to Larry Austin, a worthy winner of the MVP. And we'll talk about the Phoenix defense in a moment. But offensively, 23 points. He had a double, double, 10 boards in the mix as well. Three assists on the record to Kieran. It was a brilliant and dynamic all-round performance, wasn't it? Yeah, he did all the little things well. You know, he, he knew his game he was getting downhill, attacking the basket, but the offensive rebounds. For his size and stature, be able to rebound, it was just the willingness to win today. And I think that's what set him apart. Rob, you mentioned this in commentary and I thought it was fascinating. Can you elaborate more about his work off the ball? Because when you're watching a player like that, He's such a firecracker, so dynamic that you're drawn to that, but you were noticing a lot of other work he put into that. Yeah, I thought defensively he was excellent on Dirk Williams. He fought through screens. He denied him the ball. You know, he did so much work on that end of the floor. And Larry Austin is the kind of guy you pay to come watch because not only is he talented, athletic, highlights, but he plays it with a smile and a joy on his face. He's playing basketball and he's excited about it. Let's talk about the defensive prowess of Cheshire holding the Lions in the fourth quarter, Mike, to just 13 points. How did they do that? Yeah, I think I think they just they did well on the, on the weak side help on walling up on ball screen defense really like all defensive assignments assignments they were just they were just really clued in whereas you looked at the London Lions it was a bit more frantic they didn't really know what they were doing and and you know for for Cheshire good defense always creates good offense and I think that's what happened brilliant performance all round from Cheshire and worthy winners this afternoon I'm sure there'll be a very happy head coach standing by now with you let's check in with Ben Thomas. Coach, we spoke pre-game, and you talked about enjoying the moment. Put in the words how what this moment means to you. I probably can't right now, um, but I'm just so happy for everyone involved. You know, the players, they, they deserve it. They played an absolutely amazing game today. Defensively, we were outstanding, especially in the fourth quarter. Up until we made those subs, I think they'd only scored seven points. Um, I'm absolutely made up for the fans. Look, we, we brought a lot with us, and we can enjoy it tonight. And, you know, the organisation, you know, the, the chairman, the directors, general manager James Bryce, they all do a great job. And I'm just happy that we can all enjoy this win. And let's talk about that toughness and edge you brought collectively as a unit on the defensive side of the ball. How were you able to limit the most potent BBL office, offense in the BBL? Look, <laughs> we know that at the moment they've got injuries. And without Isaiah Reese, they're struggling to create. They've only really got Justin at the ball on the ball that can, you know, create for other people. So we knew that if we could, you know deny their wings, put pressure on the ball as much as we could, then we give ourselves a chance. And I thought that the guys really bought into that. And like I say, especially in that second second half, we've done a really good job. And you mentioned it. You see the support in droves, a 500-mile road trip. What does this win mean to those fans? Well, you can just look at it now if you want. They're still cheering. And, you know, a lot of those guys are on buses, so they'll be cheering all the way home. And, you know, we'll have a couple of drinks and enjoy it tonight. Congratulations. Well deserved. Go enjoy it, Coach. Thanks, Drew. Thank you very much. Cheers. Let's talk about his performance this afternoon, Rob, because it was such a, an efficient and organized team performance around it. A lot of credit has to go to him. Yeah, I thought they were locked in from the moment they walked in, and they looked like they believed they were going to win. Obviously, watching the game the other night gave them that belief, but sitting close to their bench, their bench was up all game. It was a total team effort, and the defense was the name of the game. They were talking about it all night, and they were prepared for this one. It was a complete team effort. A lot of performances we could highlight. We want to give an honorable mention, though, to Naimon Wright, who had a brilliant afternoon, shot over 70% from the floor, uh, 18 points, uh, points and five boards in total, Mike. Yeah, I mean, he's he's always been a standout player for this team, and I think tonight he just came and, and did his job. You know, not you know it was it was kind of a quiet sixteen, yeah. but he but he hit the shots when he needed to, made big plays when he needed to, and uh, and he carried them over the line, especially through that second half. 
one of those players, Kim, we were watching it, and he was quietly going about his business. I guess in light of Teddy O uh, and others that were explosive performances at times, he was just getting the work done unassumingly a lot of it. Yeah, and you know, we talk about him finishing at the basket. His hang time as well, it's, it's actually impressive to see. Going right at the big man's chest, hanging there, and finishing with, you know, for those and one, you know, big finishes. To me, he is one of those players, any team would love to have him. I, I think he knows his game, he can score the ball, he plays hard. A, a great, great, great opportunity for him to step up and show in, the, in front of the big stage tonight as well. You know, I, I'm just so happy for him. Yeah, I guess looking at the London performance, they would have hoped that it had a few more performances like the one they saw from Dirk Williams, who was without doubt the standout performer. Although, out of his 24 points, just seven of those, Coach, came in the second half. Yeah, they did a better job on him in the second half. He didn't get the opportunities that he had in the first, but he also missed some looks. And, you know, you have to start thinking about fatigue a little bit with this team. I talked about it, you know, during the game. This is a team that played a lot of games. He's played a lot of minutes this year, both in the BBL and in Europe. And you wonder if they fatigued in that second half. It's, it's ironic to think, Mike, that that turns out to be one of the significant issues for London in a big final. When you think about the start of the season, how deep this roster was, the hopes that they had, in the end, they rocked up here today, short stacks we talked about, and too much, as you predicted at halftime, on the shoulders of Dirk Williams, not enough from the supporting cast. Yeah, and that's what happens when you play all these games in Europe. You know, you're, you're going to be overloaded. Injuries are going to happen, and, and, and we're seeing that with them now. So uh, for now, you know, I thought today would, would have been a good day for them to come out and have a, a big statement game. Uh, but unfortunately, it, it went, went, went the other way for them. It's interesting to think that this London season, which started, and for a long time, given their early success in Europe, Kieran, was, well, full of high hopes. They could end it trophyless. And that's a scary thought, you know, and you know, we talk about load management, we talk about everything else that's happened throughout the season, but they, they, they have brought, built a team to win, you know, they need to win trophies, so you know, all, a lot riding on the playoffs now. Final word has to go to Cheshire, though, a brilliant uh, performance from them, but as uh, Coach Ben Thomas was talking about in his interview with Drew, it means a huge amount, of course, to this brilliant travelling support, and it's, it's a franchise with great tradition, but hasn't had the success for a number of years, so what can this win? do to their trajectory yeah i mean it's going to make them feel great obviously going into their next league games but yeah you feel good for people like that you know they're great fans over there again i've been going there 20 years and you see the same people that are volunteering and helping out after the game and today you could feel i'll sit right over there you could feel what it meant to them so big night for them they're gonna have a good time yeah there's no doubt about that they were brilliant all afternoon and uh thoroughly enjoyed a brilliant performance from their team congratulations to the cheshire phoenix then the second trophy of the season lockdown we still of course have two more to play for including the league title so the ride is in action on friday night as we go back to our regular schedule, 7 o'clock on air, 7.30 tips, Sky Sports action and mix riders flies this coming Friday. So, Coach, final word to you on this. I mean, the title quite clearly is yours to lose now. How do you go about this run in where you can't get complacent obviously you can't take anything for granted but you're in the box seat aren't you eight games to go long way to go you never know what's going to happen i think it's important for us to keep going and play every game like uh, it's a new day don't think about standings or anything like that and i'm proud of the way the guys have approached it this year very professional you just got to keep playing and keep improving it's been a brilliant season so far from the riders and indeed a brilliant performance from you today really enjoyed your insight in commentary as i'm sure everybody at home did similarly kieran Mike, Drew, and the crew. Fantastic work from them as ever. Uh, congratulations to the London Lions WBBL team for locking down that trophy and saluting the Cheshire Phoenix for taking the BBL trophy. We'll see you Friday. Bye for now.